Welcome, welcome, welcome to another unplanned, slightly planned, but unplanned, but a little bit, maybe a little bit planned. Hang on. I forgot to go Little bit planned live stream. It's another Gumpler stream this time, because uh, I'm still doing all the decals for the Cesar BB, 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 yes, doing all the decals for this. So I thought I'd do another stream. May as well. It keeps me company while I'm doing it. Don't know how much we'll get done today, because I've not got, I'm not doing a million decals, so I've not got a massive amount to do. Still quite a few, so I think we'll, we don't think we'll run out of time. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, now, today I did announce on Facebook earlier on, we are doing a bit of a different giveaway today. I'm not doing stickers later on. I'm, I'm giving away this today. It's a tin thing. Don't ask me why. I, it's not anything that I would have spent money on. It's not my... Mama Fox bought one of these, and she got two, so... We're going to give the other one away. There's no point because I don't want it. It's not. I'm not. I'm not like that. So I just not. It's, I mean, I like big dopey dogs, not small, weird, deformed, man-made dogs. So I'm going to give this away uh, later on in the show. It's going to be to UK viewers only though, because it's metal and heavy and big. I can't. I can't be shipping it all over the world. So it is. I'm afraid limited to UK viewers. But we'll get that out. We do stickers for everybody normally anyway. But we'll do that later on. So yes, we'll give that away. But yes, hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? If, if you remember rightly, I've been putting lots and lots of decals all over my Sazabi. Uh, and I'm not doing a, for those who've not seen one of these before, I'm not doing an actual Sazabi. It's a Patreon bill for my very, very good friend and patron, George, uh, who loves him some Overwatch and some video games. So it's going to be, basically, this Sazabi is going to be done up, not to look like, but in the colour scheme of a Diva's Mech from Overwatch because he likes Overwatch, and it's going to be done up in the colour scheme of the Shanghai Dragons, which is George's favourite team. And, just to add some extra fun to it, it's going to be painted in a Borderlands 2 style. So, ink outlining and lots of, sort of watercolour-y style colours. So, it's being done as a Borderlands style, Overwatch style, Shanghai Dragons colour scheme. You, you, you get the idea. So, it's coming along nice. It's all been base painted. I'm at the stage of doing the decals. Once the decals are gone, have done, we've got chipping and other things to do and little bits and bobs of weathering and stuff. And then it's outlining time. Being done a little diorama, so I've also got a little figure to build or to paint. And a little bit of scenery. Nothing too complicated. And I've still got the weapon to do. But yes, it's being done up as that. So today's going to be more, more decals. Uh, I have had some Shanghai Dragons decals made. Uh, with the logo, which are quite good. They're a bit shiny, but they're third party, so they're quite thick and shiny. And we've got many other sheets of decals, and I've been putting some truck stop decals on, just for fun. And I've got some Tamiya Rally Kit decals, just because if you look at Diva's Mech, it's got sponsorship all over it, so I figured we might as well put some silly fun things. I've even put some Space 1999 decals on this. It's got bits all over it. Uh, and there we go. So that's all the decals we're going to be playing with. I'm not going too crazy, but I may have to put, like... I don't know. Maybe a Subaru decal on there or something. I've got little decals. There are little decals. There is a Tamiya logo hidden on the model somewhere. I'm not going to reveal where, but there is a Tamiya logo hidden on the model. And all kinds of decals. So I'm just having fun with it. Uh, so I'm going to have a quick look at chat before we get going. Now, there's a bit of a change to today. I haven't got my big mug of tea. I've got my two litre mug of tea. Now, if you can't, you can't see from the side how big that is, but I'll see if I, how far I can tip it. It's, it's, I mean, that it, it's... It's one, two, it's two and a half of those tall. It's, it holds two litres and it just says, I like big mugs and I cannot lie. And it's got half a mug of, yeah. 
That in there is half, and that's two tea bags and six sugars, just to make it taste a bit like tea. Because if you put one tea bag in there and two sugars, it'll just be water. So, yeah, my other one's in the wash. So it's this two. I have to use back. <laughs> I have to use two hands. I can't lift it with one hand. It's too damn heavy. So, yes, yeah, jolly good. So I've got my enormous mug today. The the other mug was still in the wash. So I tried rinsing it out, but it just smelled like washing up liquid, and I wasn't going to drink tea out of that until it's been properly washed. So yes. <sighs> right. So let's have a look and see anyway. Let's see who we've got in chat. Uh, now, a lot of the chat I've missed because I didn't open the chat early enough. But uh, the first person I have in chat was Dad. Uh, welcome, Dad and Chris at Gross Models. Two of your mods. George is in as well, one of your mods. Three of your lovely mods. Uh, your mods are lovely. They will protect you and keep you safe at all times. They will nurture you and comfort you and avoid uh, people coming in and being nasty to you. But if you cross them... They will cut you into tiny cubes with a field of lasers criss in a crisscrossing pattern and then freeze it and make a little miniature version of a cubit map out of those cubes. And then they'll do a little finger puppet thing and go up and down the pile of pyramid of cubes in the style of cubit. I don't know where any of that just came from. I just made that up and it... I, tea. Hang on. I'm kind of proud of that. It's quite complicated and makes kind of sense. Uh, people are wondering where Pascal is because Pascal hasn't turned up. He must be asleep, maybe, or working. I'm sure he has work or college or something. Uh, ba -do -ba -do -do. Let's have a look. Jamie Bone is in. Welcome, Jamie. Uh, Eon's car is in. Welcome, Eon's car. Vi Creator. Hi, all. Uh, we have... George is asking Dad for a load of stickers. Uh, and Dad's saying, don't worry. Chris gave me a load at Warhammer World. I'll send them off. Uh, do do do. Let's have a look. Uh, who else we've got coming in? Skullfish, skullfish <laughs> is in. Welcome, skullfish. Have a wee fox says dad. Already done. Uh, Jimmy Bone says I think I've just seen the metal picture. I think dad should have it and put a Man City shirt over the waistcoat. There we go. That's fighting talk. Uh, let's have a look. Jamie Bone says skullfish, but with a picture of a skull and a picture of a fish. George Gabriel says, I want it, damn it, for the metal thing. I, it's UK only, I'm afraid, George. Plus, mods aren't allowed to win stuff. It's not, you know, like, because you're a mod. It's, yeah, it wouldn't be fair to people. People would shout at me if I did that, if I let mods win stuff. Uh, Phil Lewis is in. Welcome, Phil. Uh, Kenneth Elm is in. Welcome, Kenneth. Nice to see you from good old Australia. Good eye, bro. It must be, like, early in the morning. Is it not bedtime yet? Has Alex not shouted at you to go to bed? Uh, let's have a look. Oh, he's just about to call it night. He's just had dinner. Okay, well, thanks for popping in, Kenneth. Stick for around a bit. Let me know when you go. I'll probably miss. Uh, ba -do -ba -do. Phil Lewis uh, is saying he's got a chance to watch us. He's just had some test results and they're all, and they're thankfully not terrible. Good news, Phil. I won't go into details, obviously, on live telly, but there you go. Yeah, but good news. Nim Cinder is in. She says, wonder why my phone chirped. Your phone chirped because of awesomeness. And also because my stream started. Uh, we have Edward Leonard. Morning, folks. Uh, welcome, Edward. Scott Sutherland. Good after morning. There you go. I like to just show you that Guthorm is in the shot, even though you might not be able to see him. Hurry up and give away the horrendous tin picture of orphanness as Paul at Team Inept. Now, I might do it in a bit. I might do it now. I might do it in half an hour, in two hours. Who can say? Now, it's not going to be a massively long stream today, because, of course, I do have the E-Model stream at, uh, at, at 8 p.m. tonight, 9 p.m. tonight. So, um, yeah. Flaming out, that's big. We must be mum for a while, says it about the cop. Yeah, it's a big cup. Smells, sounds like a bell. It's just huge. Uh, Nim says, and now I go back to sleep. I has the work tonight. Okay, well, thanks for popping in, Nim. Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. The half sight is in. Hello, all. Welcome, the half sight. Alex is snoring, says Kenneth. Yeah, Alex isn't going to nag you to go to bed because he's snoring. Now, Alex is a very good dog. Uh, hey, hey, all Monday modeling says Joel Walker. Welcome, Joel. Yep, yeah, bit of decals today, right? So, uh, yeah, we'll crack on. Uh, just very, very quickly, as the usual, shout outs. First of all, a uh, big shout out to all my patrons who keep he, this is my job and they, they pay my wages. So, a big, massive shout out and huge thank you and hugs and love and hugs to all my patrons who do support this channel. If you want to help support this channel, you can do. I've put the thing in chat. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, you can do. You can become a patron. 
uh, and it keeps the lights on, keeps the bills paid, and means I can do this and keep doing this for you. Of course, emodels.co.uk is my channel sponsor. Uh, all your model making needs in a one stop shop solution. Link in the description below. And of course, Goblin Gaming also support this channel again. Link in the description below. Massive savings on Game Workshop, Games Workshop, Malifaux, and Conflict 47, along with everything else they stock. Use the link for Goblin Gaming that's in the description below this video. Don't just go to the website, use the link in the video that's down there. Uh, and that's my affiliate link. It tells them I sent you and I get a little bit of commission every time you place an order from that link. So use that link and it helps this channel out as well. You can submit, save massively and support this channel. I've not managed to pare that down quite quick now. <clears throat> Rather than 10 minutes of waffle about my sponsors. Yes, I've got to do it though. I've got to support the people that support me. So we have many decals. <coughs> we have the coughing, I do apologise. We have many decals. I have uh, done some bits. What have I done? I have done, I've put some on the skirtitudes. I've put a Shanghai Dragons one on there. Now it looks shiny, shiny, but like I said, these are third party decals, uh, the, the Shanghai Dragons ones. So they are quite thick film. They've, it's had many, many coats of the micro sole. Still can't remember which is which. Uh, but it's still shiny, but I don't care because once it gets matte varnished and weathered over, that shine will vanish. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. I don't want to zoom in too much because, you know, crappy quality digital zoom and all that. Let me zoom in a little tiny bit for you. Let me know if the quality is rubbish, though, because it will be all pixely and horrible. Uh, so you've got a little bit of shine on there, but that'll go away once it's been weathered and matte varnished. Good night, Kenneth. Thanks for coming in, buddy. I'm going to get going. He says, see you in a few hours, Dad. Take care, buddy. Give Alex a hug. Even though he's asleep, don't wake him up. So yes, it's a very shiny because they're quite thick, but that will go away. I, I'm more interested in, and focused on making sure the decals are flat to any raised surfaces rather than caring if they're shiny. Because like I say, weathering decals will get rid of the shine. I just want to make sure that the, the film is not too shiny uh, and that it's something that will be hidden by those varnishes. We've got a few uh, little decals stuck on the front here. We've got a total. I've got something on my glasses. Hang on, there's a bit of schmutz on my lens. Let me just unschmutz this lens. Damn it. A bit of that. Do on them as well. Right, are we unschmutzed? Nope, there's a big gob of something right on my... Do you know? It's probably a splash of tea or something. Get off. Get off. There's nothing worse than a little something right in your field of vision. It's most annoying. Uh, yes, we've got a little total. We've got a... I can't even read those without my space helmet of seeing. Where's my... There it is. I can't even read them. They're so small. Uh, Sparco and Michelin. And then there's a jumbo decal. These are all trucking things. I don't know what they mean. And now it is a bit weird. You might think it's a bit weird putting trucking decals onto uh, a Gumpla or even a mech. But like I said, Diva's mech has lots of adverts on it and little sponsorship logos. So I'm just kind of doing that. And I had some truck decals. And this is going to go into George's cabinet and never really be looked at that closely. So it's just a little bit of fun to give it some flavour. Uh, Dad says, it has to be done, folks. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? That was the wrong way around. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? What are you working on right now? And what are you having for your dinner later on this evening? I myself am having curry because it's Monday night and it's do it yourself because I've got me streaming later on. So it's a microwave curry for me. Yes, and it sounds terrible, but it's delicious. So I got those done. Uh, I put that on the backpack. It's big, but again, once it's weathered, it won't be shiny and it'll blend in a little bit. I just wanted to put that somewhere. Uh, Fern schnell gut. So if anybody who knew trucking in the 70s and 80s in Germany will kind of recognise that. Uh, but again, it's just funness. And of course, I did do lots of decals on the fuel tanks. You've got some there. Just little generic things like that. Again, just to make it fun. Kind of trucking related, but if you look at any proper filming miniature in a studio filming model like the Millennium Falcon or something, there's always little decal. Look at the, look at the original studio miniature of the Falcon, the Millennium Falcon. It's got loads of little sort of decals from truck kits and pickup truck kits and amt old amt kits and aurora kits there's just loads of things on there that are nothing to do with you know the falcon but they're just fun because you never really see them uh, and we got some done on the skirts both of the skirts have got decals on as well now as well so i'll put them back so we've just got more decals to do today probably be lots more of the little tiny fiddly ones that aren't much fun to you for you to watch but i shall see what happens i'll put that there and i'll put that there out of the way uh, i might do some more on the backpack i might do that first to be honest uh, 
Uh, Scott Sutherland says, Bacon roll in the belly, loads and loads of the shiny things on the bench since I'm at work. Ah, yes. Scott works at Ortac, an Arcadian jewellery place where they make proper Arcadian jewellery. Bench Primaris Apothecary, just moving on to the highlighting and for belly crisp and chocolate later freezer food. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Swig of tea. It, it's just... Oh. I can almost get my entire head in there. It really is that big. Right. So we're going to do more decals. Now, what's officially we need to do? Uh, if I'm on the backpack, let's have a look. Uh, little tiny farty things. That's kind of it. Okay. So little tiny farty decals, it be. Uh, so I need 109 and 110. That's almost two different types of Land Rover. Yes, Land Rover, you say. Most correct. So I don't need those right now. I'll put them there out of the way so they're not going to get watering this spilled on them. So how are you all? I hope you're all good. Got to go now. Lunch break at work. Should be in the e-model stream later, says Jamie. Thanks for popping in though, Jamie. Nice to see you, albeit briefly. And I shall see you later. Take care, buddy. See you this evening. I've also got loads of Peugeot decals. Uh, more Sparco, Michelin. Yes, I said correctly. Michelin, not Michelin. Magnetti Morelli. Um, and some... Subaru things that I must stick on there and there's a thing with a graph because you get in the in the Tamiya uh, rally set you get like a laptop uh, and there's a thing you can put like screens like graphs on the laptop because they've got screens because they're checking the tuning of the engine and stuff so we'll, we might use some of those do 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 sharp knife off stab tea <clears throat> hopefully not uh, two cheese and ham rolls, Halloween muffin, and a work in progress coffee in the belly. 0.3 millimeter scribe on the bench, says Skullfish. For my dinner, I had a chicken mayo sandwich from the corner shop, which is just it's it's sub petrol station food, but it's all right. It sufficed. Right, so I need to do what was it 109 and 110. So do let me know by the way if everything looks okay and sounds okay. Uh, um, do also let me know if. What if my helmet gets in the way? If, if it keeps coming into shot like this and you can't see anything, let me know because I, I can't tell where I am in relation to the camera. Uh, 109 and 110. Uh, let's have a look. There's 110, there's 109. Yes, right next to each other. Lovely. Which means I can just slicey, slicey, cut them off together. Where's the middle? Cut them off together. And put them both in the water at the same time. Yeah. Doodle -doo, doodle -doo, doodle How is everyone today? Right, I'll tell you what happened last night. <coughs> uh, Joel Walker is working on a 132 Typhoon, masking canopy now, almost ready for paint. Awesome. Edward Lender is painting a 40k Vex Machinator. Apparently, is being vexist. Is being vexatious. Is it vexing you? You're having a tough time of it. And big coffee in the belly. Um, he was saying uh, Edward was saying to me is that he shouldn't have glued it onto the base because it's a pain in the bum. Don't worry too much um, about. Because underneath it's just basically lead belcher and some shades and that's it. You've not got much to paint under there apart from some wires that you can get to quite easily. So gluing it to the base, it shouldn't. there's not a lot of detail stuff under there. The only thing I had separate on mine was uh, the rider with the reins. I had him separate. And then I broke the reins now to cobble together a fix. It was most annoying. Uh, yes, I'll, I shall tell you what happened last night. Uh, last night, uh, what happened last night? Well, if you remember, if you watched yesterday's, or even if you didn't watch yesterday's Warhammer Sunday stream, um, I had a, I went off to this weekend, because you know I'm doing my Warhammer stuff at the weekends, uh, and then I'm doing this stuff during the week. I decided to, like, because I bought that, I'll actually finish a sentence at some point today, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? God damn it, folks. Because I got myself that big resin uh, Death Core of Krieg tank from Forge World. Uh, when I was at Warhammer World, I thought on Saturday I'll build, I'll set up and start building. I'll get my Death Core of Krieg guys built, and then on Sunday I can do my Warhammer Conquest stuff on the stream. Yeah, they failed miserably. So yesterday I was like, right, I'm in a bad mood now. It made me really sort of angry and frustrated. So I decided to just build ten of my uh, Imperial Guard uh, guardsmen that uh, they've been very kindly sent to me by Goblin Gaming. So I had a pack of ten guardsmen that came in the Armored Fist detachment. So I just built them. It was more funny, fun time. So I did that yesterday. I got them built, um, and 
finished them up last night. And I thought, right, we'll go to bed soon because I'm tired now and the stream's all done and I've had my dinner and I've done some bits and bobs and I've finished all these these troopers. And then I, was, I thought, I'll just have a quick look and see what's on the BBC iPlayer. And it had the first episode. Now, I know you Americans haven't seen this yet, but it had the first episode of, for once we get it first, had the first episode of His Dark Materials. Now, I have to say, uh, I had a moment of panic then. I thought I'd put that on upside down. I have to say, I've got no idea what His Dark Materials is. My brother, bless him, quite a long time ago, did buy me a couple of the books. The Amber Spyglass and the other cheesily named one that I can't remember. He bought me a couple of the books uh, many, many years ago as a Christmas present or a birthday present or something. And I have to horribly admit, my dear brother Ian, I didn't actually ever read them because I'm like, that doesn't look like anything I'd be interested in. I just kind of put them on the bookshelf. And, yeah, well, I don't. I looked at the title and thought, wow, they sound terrible. <laughs> and I didn't know what they were. So I, I put them on the bookshelf. No, and he, the next year, I think he bought me another one in the series. I'm like, oh, brilliant. Thanks. I'll just put that, the other one next to the first one. <clears throat> yes. Uh, anyway, so I've never read them. Uh, but there's been so much hoo-ha and kerfuffle about them over the last few weeks that I thought, OK, there's a photograph on the iPlayer of a, of a child with a, enormous polar bears all around. <sighs> Go on, I'll give it a go. What, what is this? Everybody's shouting about this amber, this his dark materials what is this nonsense where's my brush got there it is uh, what is this what is this nonsense so I, I watched it um and and very nice i don't even know what it is never heard never read the books and i, and I was like you know what this, this is pretty good it's kind of a slightly steampunky alternative britain where it's got dirigibles and airships and okay i'll be up for that and let's have a look and and, and I watched it for a bit and I thought, okay, uh, there's the uh, there's the guy that they couldn't afford or they didn't want Morgan Freeman. So they got the guy that looks like him, but sounds nothing like him. Awesome. He's quite cool. And I watched it and it was actually quite good. But uh, I've got no idea what's going on, so I don't really know. But it seems all right, so I might stick with it. But the, I finished watching it and I thought, okay, I was getting confused because like the... the, the the child, the girl, she had that mink or whatever stoat as her, as a demon, as a companion animal, and I'm like, okay, because when you first watch it, I'm thinking, all right, so she's got the brown one, and her little friend, this like lad, whose name is whatever Harry or something, typically British, he's obviously got the white one, but then she had a white one. I'm like, okay, hang on, I'm confused now. Uh, and then there's a bit where she's talking to the animal, and it's the white one, and she's going up some stairs, and then it's a brown one. I'm thinking, hang on, why is why is the boy's animal with her? And I got really confused. So I had to go on the internet and re read words. I'm like, why is it? Why does she keep having a different demon animal? Why is it the white one and the brown? And then it, it, it explained that because her, her demon animal hasn't fixed yet, hasn't settled on a form, it changes. I'm like, oh, oh, right. It didn't explain that. So I spent the whole episode watching it, kind of picking my brain. Why is this? Why? Whose animal is that? Why is it changing? So I had to kind of, yeah, it kind of ruined it a bit because it didn't really explain that. So, yeah. But it seemed all right. It seemed a bit confusing and a bit, no, it seemed a bit sort of Game of Thrones light, as in lacking something. But then again, it's the first episode. So we shall see where it goes. We shall see what happens. But I'll stick with it. I'll watch it. I'll see what happens. I'm up, I'm up for a an expensive drama type, slightly weird type shenanigan. I'm up for that. I'm never going to say no. I did enjoy The Thrones. And I know it's nothing like Game It's nothing to do with Game of Thrones, but some kind of like sprawling, expansive, fantastical thing. I'll be up for watching some of that. I'm sure I'll hate it if it starts getting all wishy-washy magic and all that nonsense because that's just a bit too a bit too wishy-washy nonsense for me that uh edward leonard is in welcome edward oh god this oh, this way i keep forgetting how heavy this cup is also i can't speak from it when i've got my helmet of seeing on it gets in the way <laughs> i need an enormous star up uh, straw 
Uh, so Joe Walker says, first Macross build next up for me. Any recommendations on which to build first? I have the YF-19 or the VF-15A to choose from. I have the weapon set, I think, works with either. Ooh, Dilemma. I have no idea about Macross, I'm afraid. I've got literally one Macross kit, which is the... I can't see it with these glasses on. It's the Macross Frontier Messiah. I don't know what that is. It was very kindly given to me by one of my followers. Uh, I've written the name if you gave it to me, but I can't see it now. But it was gifted to me, uh, and I've got to make that. So, but I don't, I just don't know how to. Uh, if anyone on chat maybe knows, they can help you out. Uh, Edwin RSA says, to answer Dad's question, currently working on Charles Zaku Origin, a slow progress since I was resting a few days after the uh, Gumpler Builders World Cup event. Cool. Hopefully it's coming on well. Right, more stickies. Uh, decals even, not stickies. <laughs> Heresy. Heresy. Me, put stickers. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got no idea what 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 it's about or anything. So I'll stick with it and watch it, and I'm sure I'll end up hating it when it goes all magically nonsense, all Harry Potterish or sword and sorcery. 111, 112, 111, and also 112. You can go there. 111, 112. Where are you on? You can see. Oh, cool! I can be down here, and you can see me. Cool. I don't know if this is the same for you guys, right? Here you go. Here's a question. We've all got our workspaces. And for those of us, for those of you who have like a, a generously sized work area, who aren't just working off a corner of the kitchen table. I've got this workbench and it must be, let's say, the actual workspace must be five foot by two foot or something like that. It's quite, it's quite a big space. It's not massive, but it's generous. It's, a, it's like a six seven foot long table but i've not got a lot of the table all the table's covered up with spray booth and stuff but um is it just me or do you find that even if you i mean i've got right now i've got the ipad here i've got my mug there i've got the sorting tray of bits and stuff over to the other side so you can't see that but i know we all end up working in a really small space even if you've got a massive table, you always end up focused in a small area because everything else is full of clutter. But is it just me or do you end up working like right against the edge of the table? Like I, I tend to work like an inch from the edge of the table with all this table over there that I don't use. Like working over here to me is weird because that's about a foot from the edge of the table. I always find myself working right over the edge, which is where all the things fall off and go into the mouth of the eagerly awaiting carpet monster. But is it just me that does that? Or do any of you actually work in the middle of your expansive work areas? Or do you always end up working into a little... T Even if the table was empty, would you end up working into a little tiny area? I think I would. Even if I had a vast, empty table, I'd still am working in like a foot square space, I think. It's just the way things are. Right, well, as is with Bandai decals, if you can see, all the little black decal numbers have come off all over the decals. You have to watch for those. Pain in the bum. Uh, where does this go? This goes like that. There. Ish. Ish. Yeah, so watch on decal, Bandai decals, for the little black decal numbers whizzing off all over your model. Uh, that's on my finger. There we go. They're easily removed. You just brush them off, but they can. you can stick a decal on your model and suddenly find there's like a ginormous number three stuck over the middle of it. And you're like, oh, blimps. Blimps. Like I think there's a number one under there. Hang on, let me just get off. What is the little bit of debris under the decal? Get uh, get out. There's a little What is this? There's a small bit of plastic under that decal. It's very strange. How very weird. We've got more foodstuffs. Uh, Phil Lewis says, belly snotted rolls. Oh. Uh, followed by a random and healthy deliciousness. Bench still working on the Tamir Panther D. Once done, we'll start working on crew. Can I finish it in time for Telford? Nah. There's no finishing anything in time for Telford. Not even Telford gets finished in time for Telford. That goes there. That goes off the side thank you very much is my i can feel my hair on the camera do let me know if i'm just constantly putting my head in shot i may have to adjust the camera positions positionage if it is i'll do that that'll do there lovely uh, phil lewis says i hope to be there every day telford i assume not my workbench <laughs> that'd be weird 
Is my hair actually getting on the... Where's the camera? Yes, it could be. I have roughly 8 foot by 10 foot 3 tables and end up fiddling my way into about a foot square as well. It's damn hilarious when you look up and realise, says Joel Walker. It's always the way. I just don't know why I... Because all the light on my desk is like here where I'm working. That's where all the... I've only got like overhead lights and a couple of spotlights. So the pool, main pool of light is here for the best seeing. And yet, I just sit like a foot from the edge of the table. I don't know, it's weird. It's just weird. Uh, Phil Lewis says he might be there. Uh, so look, I hope to be there every day. Depends on health. And Dad says, nice, we're there both days. Yeah. Bit of the micro set, just to lock these down. Get them sucked down. Suck it down. Onto the... Uh, Onto the paintwork. Uh, if you're not, if you have not seen the other ones of this, I'm applying these decals, uh, various forms of decals. They're all water slides. I'm sealing them in, well, locking them down and getting them sucked down with Micro Set and Micro Sol from Micro Scale Industries. They're basically very similar to Mr. Mark Soft and Mr. Mark Setter, but these are a little less aggressive than Mr. Mark Soft and Setter. Uh, and I'm applying them to unvarnished paint there is no varnish on this it's just the acrylic paint that's why i'm wearing gloves i don't want to scrape all the paint off there's no varnish on this no gloss varnish kind of learned over the over the recent year or two you don't need gloss varnish god that cup weighs a ton oh. phil lewis says you should have models on at least two club tables cool and then his dad says are you going to enter your kit oh that's answered it pimp your club phil yeah uh, put your club down in the chat dude if your club has a website or a Facebook page, then if you want to send that to one of the mods, uh, I am more than happy for the mods to post that in the uh, in the chat so people can click on it. If you've got a Facebook page or a website for your club. Uh, I'm not in a club, but I do have other model makers boom hook, which is in chat now, which is the best group on Facebook. If you're not a member, go and join. Go and join. It's in there in, there in chat for you. Uh, yeah, if you're not a member of a modelling club, join the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook. We're all lovely. Everybody will look after you. Nobody's awful. Uh, we need... I can't put those two on because I've got a big fat ass thing on there. So I need 114 and 113. 114 and 113. Yes, if you want to send one of the mods uh, a link... They can post it in chat for you. Mods can post links in chat. You guys can't. One one four. One one three. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Edward Leonard says, as long as it's not my tank bell part five, modelers club, thank you very much. Like and subscribe. Yes, my little rants about all the tables full of unweathered spitfires and painted in an brush painted in animals. Yes. Bless them. It's a certain kind of modeler that. <laughs> My plane bill part five. Please like and subscribe. Mm -mm -mm. Anybody who's not watched that video on my channel be like, what the hell are you? What's that voice? What, what's the voice on what? Yes. If you've not seen it, when you finish watching this on my channel, go into the front page playlists, how to guides in the playlist section and uh, one of them is how to make youtube to i oh, know it's fox explains i think it's fox explains playlist fox explains how to do youtube tutorial videos you'll then you'll get it my first my plane bill part one thank you like and subscribe i think i need to say it with a lateral lisp like and subscribe thank you very much it just seems to work better with a lateral lisp yes it does i don't know what that voice it's just a voice that i do sometimes I think I call it my train spotter voice, but it's not really a train spotter voice. I don't know. It comes in handy. Uh, Dad says, shout if you see me and Dave the Butcher wandering around. You'll know Dad and, uh, well, you'll recognise Dad and Dave anyway from when you've seen him on the tallies. But um, Chris is going. Chris will be either be wearing an E-Models jacket or his bright orange gross models jacket fleece hoodie thing, which is probably the most obvious thing you can see in the entire um, exhibition centre. Uh, Dad, I suspect we're wearing his red uh, scaly models one, uh, and Dave will be obviously stood next to Dad or Chris. <laughs> I need to put that on there. Bah, bah, 
No, where's this go? This goes. Well, it goes there, you see? It goes about about here. And this one goes right about. Is my head getting into shot? But do tell me if my head's just constantly getting into shot and all you're seeing is the top of my head. Because I don't want you just to watch the top of my bones. That's not why you're here. Although, having said that, none of you are actually watching. You're all just listening to me in the background, which is fine. But, yeah, do let me know. Because I can't see what you guys can see. Uh, did Colin say if he was going, says Phil. I don't know if Colin's going. I don't know if uh, Colin's going to Telford. You might have said he is or not. I, can't, I just honestly can't remember uh, what he's, whether he's going or not. Right, you need to get over there like that, right? That needs to go there. Like that. Little bit of pushy pushy, there you go, lovely. Lovely. You stay there like that. And what I'll do is I'll get my cotton bud. Cotton bud? Cotton bud. And I'll squish you down. Squish you down. I don't know why I'm doing silly voice. It just keeps me interested. It keeps me amused putting on silly voices. I'm going to squash you down like that, and then then you can't move anywhere. And then I'm going to put you there like that, and I'm going to squish you down as well. There you go. Squish you down. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. It's not even high enough, that one. It's too high, I mean. So I got carried away then and messed up that decal. Colin won't be able to make it as far as I'm aware, says Dad, unless things have changed. Travelling about's not not as easy for Colin, so I wasn't sure if he'd be able to make it or not. It would be nice because Colin's a lovely bloke. You'd love to meet him. If you've not met Colin, he's awesome. He's a top bloke. It's all hug time. Him and Paul, it's all hug times. Do 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 do. A little bit of this. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing with these Microset and Microsol, if you don't know what these solutions are, uh, I know most. I think most of you watching now do know what these are. But for anybody who's watching who doesn't know what these are, I have to always assume that there's somebody new watching my stuff. Maybe not live, but maybe later. Uh, decal setting solutions. They usually come in two two steps. One, which is the first coat you put on, which is to um, sort of soften the decal and suck it down to the surface and help it get flat it's kind of weird because they both do very similar things the first one kind of just makes it melt onto the surface a bit better uh, and then this, that's the micro set and then the red one micro sol is designed to i assume soften the decal in a different way to help it now it's down there to help it kind of soften and fold into any corners and ridges and recesses so if you've got say a, a decal going over a panel line once it's on there and the micro set has helped it stick down and get on there, the microsol softens it so it can sag into the recess and look more painted on. You usually use them in conjunction. So like micro, micro, uh, Mr. Mark Setter and Softer. Mr. Mark Setter is the one you get there to get the decal on and get it blocked in place. And Mr. Mark Softer does the same thing. It just softens it once it's on there and helps it shook down and into any recesses if you do use decal solutions don't panic if your decal suddenly goes all crinkly like your thumb mat or your skin after you've been in the bath for a while don't panic it's supposed to do that and don't touch it if it goes all crinkly wrinkly just leave it because it's stretching and squishing it and it'll compress it and stretch it back and then it'll settle back down and go flat again it's all part of what it does so if it does go crinkly don't panic just leave it don't try adjusting it and squishing it down uh, Gaz Vickers is in. Plop, says Gaz Vickers. Welcome, Gaz. I need to very quickly wipe my nose. Ah. Excuse me. Ooh. Hang on, hang on. My nose suddenly went sniffle factory. Ooh. Uh, next we have decal number 118 and 117. I need a weapon. Sir finishing this fight master chief mind telling me what you're doing on that ship sir finishing this fight and what was it one one eight and one one seven i was such a big halo fan back in the day it was the best game ever when i first got my first xbox purely to play halo 
those were the days going around to your mate's house with your xbox and they had two tvs or three tvs beer and pizza and a proper land session two or three xboxes god those were the days those were the days and i was one of the i don't know why but Everybody raved about the visuals in Halo 2 for the time, obviously. You know, by today's standards, they're both absolutely bish. But everybody raved about how the Halo 2 graphics had just advanced far from Halo 1. But I, especially when playing on a CRT back in the day, I thought Halo 1 graphics were better because they were less... I don't know, they just looked more smooth and clean and more shiny. Halo 2 looked more like textures on polygons. Do any traders at Telford carry Gundam? Asks Wolfgang the Seal. Welcome, Wolfgang the Seal. Um, I don't know. Uh, Japan Cool did go there for a couple of times. Um, but I don't think they're even in business anymore. Uh, or if they are, I doubt they're going. Um, there are a few other UK Gumpla traders. But there's not many retailers that actually sell Gumpla in the UK. There are some retailers that sell Gumpla. Like as a, a, a extra, like e-models sell some Gumpla, but only as a small part of their stock. There are but like dedicated Gumpler retailers. There's only a handful. And given that IPMS is... Well, when Japan Cool went there the first year, basically the, the, the clientele for IPMS has always kind of traditionally been the older, traditional, middle-aged British Spitfire builder type. Not, not saying exclusively, but it's kind of who it... The kind of modeler it attracts. So when I know when Japan Cool went there, the first year they went there, I helped them out on their stall. The first time they went there, the people were just, the minds of the people were blown. Because a lot of them just didn't know what the hell Gumpler even were. So they got loads of like these, you know, proper old school modelers coming to all these old, these middle aged guys. Going, oh, what's this? What's all this then? All oh, these robots. Yeah, I like it. They were, minds were blown. So, but yeah, there's not a lot of dedicated uh, unfortunately dedicated retailers that just do Gumpler over here purely because we it's not easy in the UK to get Gumpler there's no distribution chain dedicated in the UK so you know people that do sell Gumpler over here they can't get them at big massive discounts from Bandai that's how trade thrives you're a retailer you want to sell product X you need to get a nice big fat discount off the manufacturer or your distributor. So you, you're you're a retailer. Um, product X is one hundred pounds, but your re, your distributor or the manufacturer gives you a thirty percent trade discount. So the one hundred pound model costs you seventy pounds to buy, and then you can stock it. But of course, one hundred pounds is the recommended retail price. So if you want to, you can sell it for £100 and make 30% profit on that product. Or you can sell it at, you know, £70 and make no percent profit. Or you can sell it somewhere in between based on what other people are selling it for. That's how retail works. But unfortunately in the UK, unless things have changed in the last few years, there's no dedicated retail chain because traditionally Bandai look at their sales and they don't see big sales in in the in, in UK and in a lot of Europe because there's no dedicated retail it's a catch-22 there's no retail distribution so Bandai don't see sales because all the people that sell it in the UK buy it from other retailers in Europe or and you know other places like that where anywhere they can get it you find a lot of the retailers buy them from other retailers so it's retail to retail Bandai don't see that they just sell X amount to a company in say I don't know Germany or Italy or Spain or somewhere and they see that profit. They don't see then the sale from that retailer to say the e retailer in this country. So they don't see a demand for it. And that's kind of a catch me too because they don't see demands. So they don't really want to sell a distribution. Somebody contacts them from the UK saying, I want to sell Gumpler. Can I have a distribution agreement? They'll be like, no, we don't see a demand for it there. So it's, it perpetuates itself and it's quite frustrating, which means when we do get Gumpler over here, we haven't got the big, you know, trade discounts. So that's why UK prices, if you buy Gumpler in the UK, it's often a lot more expensive because the retailer hasn't had a 25 or 30 or 20 percent or whatever percent trade discount from the official distribution chain. 
they've had to get it for 10 percent under rrp because the guy selling it that they bought it from got it for 30 percent up distribute uh, you know uh, trade benefit trade benefit trade discount and is selling it at a 10 percent discount so the person buying it has to buy it at 10 percent discount and then they've only got 10 percent to play with so they can't it, it's a catch-22 really is a catch-22 but there might be somebody uh chindi 88 welcome he says or she says uh, this is uk gunplay retail is basically dead you're basically re reliant on whatever amazon have in stock i can recommend an irish stockist but even they are limited on many things yeah that's the problem there is a demand for it, but there's just no re the retail chain. Uh, Bandai does seem to want to expand to the West, though. They recently developed a figure line specifically for the West, and they seem to be opening up to some retail routes. Um, yeah, that's, the, the, you know, especially with things like the Star Wars stuff they're doing, they are starting to get little trade agreements in. But even that Star Wars thing with Ravel was temporary. It wasn't permanent. So uh, I was kind of hoping, much as I may lambast Ravel now, crappy quality if they could take on official distribution say for gumpler like in the us you've got bluefin who distribute bandai products and gumpler uh in the euro in the eu there's nothing there's nothing at all so i was thinking if Ravel managed to you know impress bandai enough then maybe they could distribute gumpler in the in the west in the in, in the eu and in the uk because that'd be fantastic because i don't care if it's but if it's Ravel distributing it they're not actually making the model of boxing i don't care as long as we get them but it, yeah it probably won't happen i know the uk shopper are currently setting up gundam and wave and the like as part of their stop they'll be importing direct from japan yeah that can be medonkulously expensive though It'd be interesting to see how they managed to get good discounts or good prices for that. That's the problem. UK retailers have been able to get stock by hook or by crook in various ways, but they just don't get the trade discount from the manufacturer or official retail chain, so they can't offer the big savings, which is why, especially in the UK, often it's cheaper just to go on Amazon and buy it from someone in Japan because I could buy an £80 Gumpler kit with free shipping from someone in Japan. It'll take six weeks, but it's cheaper than buying the £80 kit for... 120 pound in the uk because there's no big discount on there so that's the price you pay uh what are we on do we are on can't put those on i think we're done on the backpack but i think what we need to do is add some more silliness to the backpack i think george will agree with me on this we need silliness and by silliness i mean just not official decals uh, Chindi88 says Machine and Krieger are even more thin on the ground over here I generally don't know of anywhere that carries them No I know that like you know as I say E-models themselves did do carry a small stock of Gumpler But again they're limited to the same supply chain as everybody else So uh... Lost Planet uh, Forbidden Planet sometimes very occasionally get some But it's random as to what they get And it's in small numbers do 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 right george you're getting a michelin man on your uh on your um on your backpack here and uh, if you're still watching might be the meeting uh i think i shall give him well here you go here's a question for the chat on the backpack do we want do we want a peugeot symbol bearing in mind that french cars are crap so Pe peugeot and uh, renault a terrible car they're just awful but do you want a peugeot or do you want a Michelin Michelin man? Or do you want a Total Michelin? What should we have? Peugeot, Michelin, or Total Michelin? What should we have? Little rally set. I know you can't really see them, but you can a bit. Do, 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 do. You should freehand a widge onto it, says Paul at Team Inep. Obsessed. You're just widge obsessed, aren't you? You really are widge obsessed. I don't know. Oh, I can't, I can't take a swig because my, oh, hang on, I have to lift my visor up. If you're not sure how big this cup really is, that's the backpack. Yeah, it's that big. I nearly, if I dropped that then, I would have been ultimate sadness. Dad says squig. Don't have a squig. So, so far, the really helpful chat has suggested out of all these decals, I should basically freehand a widge or a squig. I'm going home. You guys are... I, I don't pay enough. I don't pay anything. <laughs> I've not paid enough. A Peugeot Cesarbi will just be collapsed in an alleyway somewhere, slowly rusting, with Shaw looking forlornly at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And then it'd be then somebody in a Huno would drive past and go, ha ha, and then that would just conk out as well. Squig Ridge says gross models. I'm not doing freehand painting. I've got not not when I've got time to make it look good. I can freehand a thing every now and then a bit since you know I, I freehanded my checker pattern, but that's a checker pattern. It's not too hard. Uh, there are some decals to go on these, by the way, which in my build, these are of course funnels, but in my build they're actually just going to be like mortar rounds or rocket rounds. I need to tidy up the red paint on there though before I put the decals on. I think I might not need to. We'll see. Well, you guys have been no help whatsoever. Thanks, chat. Do you know? I don't know. I'll, I'll just I'll just pick one then, shall I? <laughs> Mind you, I've got these as well. Let's have a look. Uh, no. They're all kind of big, though. I don't want anything too big. Well, maybe we just have enough on the backpack. On the backpack. That's enough to be going on with there, I think. Fat white bloke. I don't know. What? Fat white bloke. You mean that? That's supposed to be a truck with a face. It's not. Actually a, it's, a, it's a truck and a car. They just happen to have like arms and a face. Yeah, the Europeans are weird. Dutch and Germans, they're just weird. You know what? Actually, I might pass because I think I might leave it because we have got enough on there. So we'll we'll put that to one side because no help from the, for the Klingon from the crowd there. Useless, all a lot of you. Useless, all of you. So what we'll do is we will move on to the next step, which is let's do the butt. It's time for some butt action. Dad then does say Michelin. Too late now, Dad. I've moved on now. I've moved on now. Right, so we've got the butt, generalised butt area. So. Butt plate. Other butt plate. And then we have... Und also we are having... Ja, das ist richtig. This one here, I like that, you see, and also <clears throat> that one there, la, that's is richtig. Zwei Bootplaten gefahren mit the lining up and locking into place. Yeah, that's is richtig. There we go. So they go on like that. There you go, like that, you see. Oh, no, almost. Go on camera, dear. They go together like that. So, put a no entry decal on the butt, says Dad. I don't even, I don't, I don't have a no entry decal. There isn't a no entry decal. There's a corrosive and there's poison irritant. Uh, I love Volvo. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to put, I was going to put like a long vehicle and keep your distance on there. But I don't know if I can get a long vehicle. There's not really a lot, a big long flat area I can put long vehicle on. I should have put some on the back of the shins really, shouldn't I? Can't go back now. Can't go back. Too late. Uh, let's have a look. Mm. Well, let's see what the actual decals. Well, I know I need to put a dragon on the back because we've got the SO1 registry. And all the... Because this isn't going to be Char's Cesarbi. I'm replacing any of Char's signet, signatory signage uh, uh, with the Shanghai Dragons Symbology. Sounds like a Char album. New from Jean-Michel Char. Symbology. And lots of little sort of caution tick marks. So let's do a, a dragon first then. Let's get a, a squiggly dragon going on. So the dragon needs to be on this side. Here. Now, oops, keyboard. Now I do have a choice. And the choice that I have is I could do a little dragon or I could do a big honky dragon that covers the whole thing. That would be that would be interesting. And not boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself some tape. I got me sent some tape. And what I did was I applied the tape there like that, you see, on the, on the thing there. That's a bit too big now. Or I'll, I'll put the tape down there. I'll get me sent some smaller tape like this, you see. And what I'll do is I'll put it there. And we'll put that on there like that. Three dimensional shapes. I'm not good with three dimensions. I'm just rubbish with three dimensions. I shall put this there like that, you see. It's really hard when you've got tip gloves on. Because tip gloves want to do tip sticking. And then we'll stick that on there like that. Oh, and then my gloves uh, get off. Basically, I'll put the tape over the same area that I've just put tape in. Idiot. Well done, Fox. Yeah, I shall cut that other tape in half. 
I should place it upon the bottom area. Like this, you see. Because what I can do now is not have that fit very well. Brilliant. Brilliant. Rabbit says, my first model tape part 23. Please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. My first painting thing with the sticking and the words. My first YouTube video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, right, I need to put more tape on it. More tape. Remember, folks, if you're doing YouTube videos, just on, as an apropos of what we were talking about with the please like and subscribe, if you're doing YouTube videos, for the love of dog, text, tags, and titles. Otherwise, we'll just be merciless and rib you. Take the mickey out of you. Slap that tape on. Slap it on. Yeah, you thought there wouldn't be button action. Oh, there's button action. There's always button action. You know there's always button action. Right, so that is taper to cated. Taper to taper tated. Tid. On there. Uh, I might pull it down from there a bit. The reason I'm doing this is I don't know what I'm going to do yet. And I might have a decal that goes across both panels. Maybe. Maybe I might do that. So, I can't even cut through goddamn text. <sighs> there we go. So, what I want to do is just have them both in place. So that if I have the decal going across, I can have it going across. And then if needed, I can trim it back later. Because I don't know how big the decal needs to be. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. Re-record, not fade away. Re-record, not fade away. Now, it's going to be red and yellow. So, if it's on red, I want the dragon with the white tail. If it's on the yellow bit where the tail is, I want the dragon with the red tail. But I don't know what... I've been using this size so far and this size a bit. I could fit one of these big honkers on here. But I'm going to have a hell of a time getting it around all these recessy areas now i've tried doing one of these big ones on smaller part of plastic earlier on on a small bit of skirting and it went horribly wrong so i just gave up in the end so what i might do is i might cut one out anyway should we just do it should we just should we just have it have it large so if i if i plan for the tail to be on the yellow Maybe I'll go with the red tail one because then I can plan for it to be on the yellow. Now this may go horribly, horribly wrong. We shall find out. The first thing I need to do is mop up this pool of water because Murphy's Law says I will put the sheet of decals in the water and that will just generate the big sadness. So I'll put that there. Now, these are, like I've said before, these are third party custom made decals, which means it's one sheet of decal paper, one sheet of film and one sheet of carrier film. There's no pre-cutting on this. So I have to manually trim all of them, which is fine. It's not hard. You don't have to be super, super accurate. And they are quite big. So this is where you get my head in shot constantly now. So I do apologies if I do. I'm going to try and trim this. Let's put this tape out of the way. Tape, get out of the way. So we shall trim it this away. Let's trim it in time. Start off with some rough cuts. Excuse you. Just get your knife in there and just get some basic shapes cut away. Just to block out the kind of shape you're looking for. And then once you've done that, then you can start to go in a bit closer. Move clue. I can't sing that. Copyright. You can start to go in closer. And start carefully tracing curves. Now you have to make sure you do this with a new sharp blade. This is a new blade in here. And you have to try and avoid rooking up the surface. Because you'll just get a raised edge on your film. Then it'll look like bish. So carefully as I can. I've got to now trace these edges. And it's when you go around a curve that you tend to sort of ground up the corner. The shape of the paper a bit. And that's where you get sort of sticky up rough edges. A little bit it can be a bit difficult and tricky 
we try and get as close as you can to the actual printed area it's just to minimize the amount of clear film that's uh, you know stood by i see that's a fresh stabity blade there fox emergency services on the standby says phil lewis oh, i've got my hot dial mate don't worry about that although i have developed a gland in my body that like kind of just exudes super glue whenever i get injured so I've, I've done it so often now that my body just creates its own super glue at the side at the scene of violence intentional or unintentional violence Okay, so yeah, because this is third party though, the film is quite thick, and as you've seen earlier on, quite shiny tie, shiny, shiny tie. Well, that's not even a word. Quite shiny, so it really is about minimising how much of that film remains. On the little tiny ones, you've not got a lot of options, but on these bigger ones, you can work away and get it kind of reduced. Now the reality is, of course, I'll put this on. Because again, it is a thicker film, they're not as conducive to resting into recesses and round funky shapes. So it might be that I put this on the model, fart around with it for five minutes, do a bit of a swear, and then just take it all off again and abandon that idea. It's entirely possible. I did that with the other area where I did a, a big decal on, a, on one of the front skirts because it didn't quite work out. We'll just work our way around this curve. Also, if you cut a lot of like empty space like that, negative space like this out, it also helps with the decal bending and flexing. If it's got empty space, like cutting this out, means there's a bit more possibility of the decal flexing then and going across uneven surfaces a bit better. You're not going to get basically corners where it folds if you can minimise that. But again, you are very limited as to what you can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if it's inkjet and you get too close to the ink decal, the ink uh, may bleed out. Is it inkjet or laser printed? I have no idea. They've done white, so I don't know. You wouldn't do that. I don't think it's either inkjet or laser printed in that case. Because the decals do include white. Because on the other sheet... My nose is rumbling. On the other sheet... Uh, they've actually got a white tail, as you can see there. So they are printing white for me, so I don't know if it's inkjet or just Django is in. Django, rather, not just just Django, because it's not actually just Django, it's just Django. But you've got to put just Django. If, you don't, if he doesn't call himself just Django, then he can't really explain why it's Django and not just Django. Phil said it should be fine as he'd probably use an Alps printer in that case. I did wonder, although having said that, there is a noticeable pattern to the to the colours. It's like a sort of hatched pattern. A bit like a, uh, what do you call it? Halftone pattern. And I don't know if Alps gives you a halftone pattern. And Alps is kind of old now, it's... Alps is, uh, I don't even know if anybody really uses it commercially anymore because, this, you know, they, they've actually, I looked it up, they've actually stopped production of the printers and the cartridges as well, like years ago. So if you've got an Alps printer nowadays, it's more a question of what do you do when you, you can't get replacement cartridges for it because they don't make them anymore. So there must be some modern new technology that can do it. Maybe they've got that. It was if you want to know where I got them done, uh, I got them done from. Um, there's nowhere in the UK that does custom decals that doesn't cost either a fortune, or that won't expect you to order like 500 sheets. Uh, if you're getting custom decals done, you want good quality. You're not just doing them yourself. Uh, then you're really looking at outside the UK, unfortunately. And I got these done at a place called, I think it was, I could be wrong, but I think it was Fallout Hobbies. It's in the US. Fallout Hobbies. And they charge me uh, $35 uh, for one sheet of decals. But they actually printed two because they did one with the red and one with the, the white tail. I just sent them a design, a, a Photoshop file with the design on it. Uh, and they said, that's great. Do you want one with a white tail as well? Just in case I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, go on then. 
so it didn't cost me extra so they give me a second sheet as part of it which is kind of cool the downside is of course uh, ideally they want you to send what you want made into a decal so it may well be, you know if you've got access to photoshop you know what you're doing i sent them a peer i i found png files of the the dragon and sent it to them as a as a psd file and they were able to turn that into vectors and make the decals then so it's a lot cheaper if you can do the prep work for them otherwise i think you can just say please can i have a sheet with this this and this and they'll do all the design work for you but you'll whoever you get it done by they'll charge you extra if they're doing all the design work so that's not bad that'll do it's not perfect but it'll do i need to get rid of all them bits of uh, paper now let me just get a little receptacle that receptacle will suffice let me get a brush of brushy brushy uh, so yeah in the uk forget it there's nowhere there's no way you can do that isn't going to ask you to do 500 sheets or charge you a fortune i have found i found one place that did some decals for me that printed white um but they were just gash they were absolute gash uh, if you watch my striker build, it's when I got them made. They were just terrible. They may as well have been printed on like sheets of perspex. They were so thick and unusable. I'm sure there are lots of other places I haven't found. So, you know, if you are a member of the Model Makers Boom Hut, there's the Boom Hut thing in the chat. If you are a member of the Model Makers Boom Hut and you know a place that does decals, we don't. Now, here we go. If you do decals yourself, we don't allow buying and selling in the Boom Hut, so you can't advertise your services. However, if you're not doing it yourself, but you know somewhere that's done it for you, you've had people make decals for you and you know about them, you can say, hey, if you're looking for decals to be made, I know this place that does them. So you can't sell your own stuff, but you can, if you found somewhere that does them, give it a go. Tell other people, because the one thing everybody needs, especially in the Gumpler world, is somewhere that does decent decals. Right, that can go on there like that. Now, there are going to be issues with it folding around. There is something that goes in there. But what we can do is we can get the decal on to start with and then worry about things going into holes later. Uh, I print my own decals on my Epson WF7710. It says RetroRabbit, but they can't do white. They're inkjets and uh, other type of printers. You can print your own, but the limitation is you can't do white. And that's the problem without spending in the old days an alps printer was the only way to get to print your own decals with white in but it would cost you a fortune because it wasn't a domestic printer it was proper industrial machinery so now you have to count on things like underpainting with white or print on white decal paper but then you have to sort of trim it exactly to the edge of the printed area because you get white underneath yeah it can get a bit weird Right, so I've got the decal in the tray. I've got it upside down in the tray because it, when you put a decal in, it will curl up. So if you, it's a big decal, put it in upside down so when it tries to curl up, it can't. Get it out of the tray and onto the, where's the thing? Let me just make sure you're all in focus. It's, you can't see because it's under the chat, but I've got my little pile of water there. Little pile of water. Oops, it's coming off already. There we go. Water was warmer than I thought. Now it will be a bit tricky moving it around because it's now this S shape. When S S is and this kind of shape, we've got little sort of dangly bits. It can be a little bit tricksy. So we'll see. Now this may not work. It may be a complete, absolute, abject failure. A bit like my deathcore Cree bar stools. But we shall find out. So let's see how we get on. So what I do is I'm going to get it on there like this. You see, I'm going to gently, as gently as I can clamp the decal down with my fingers and then try and pull the paper away but the, there are edges on the paper where I've cut it so I've got to make sure the decal doesn't catch on one of those I don't want it to rip that's why these little dangly shapes can be quite tricksy see this bit here is quite delicate so I've got to carefully maneuver there we go there we go I've got to watch this bit catching on something mm. oh that was that was tricky I'm squeezing out a big pool right so we've got this decal on here now now what I want to do is obviously 
get it to conform to one hell of an uneven surface and also move around. To see, that's why I've got this bit taped down because then I can start moving things around. So if I put that there, this can go here, you see? Now that's going over that edge, but I don't care because we'll sort that later. That needs to come down to there. That can come to there. My computer fan is going quite loud, so I hope you can still see and hear me okay. I hope I've not lost you or anything. It normally means it's doing something. What's it doing? Is it like downloading virus at that's in nonsense? My computer does suffer from the worst timing ever sometimes. Right, so that's going to suffice, I think. I'll move it down a bit because it's catching on that edge. If I hold that there. Move him down a smidge. Smidge-tacular! Right, so there we've got all the bonds on there. So what you want to do when you're doing these kind of big decals, it's made more complicated by the fact I'm doing it over two different pieces, but what you want to do is you want to anchor it from a certain point. So I'm going to anchor the head first of all. That's my anchor point. So I'm going to anchor the head down. Now what I'm doing is I'm rolling the, the cotton bud over the decal. This is to squeeze out any excess water and get it as flat as possible to the surface. Because if you get water in there and then the water evaporates away, you get left with an air bubble and that's where you get silvering. So we've got a raised lip here. I want to squeeze that over. Now there is a hole in the back, you can see there. Don't care. Don't worry about that now. We just need to get it into this recess here. Squeeze it down in there as best we can. It's just about getting it flat onto the surface. Any little holes and things we can worry about later. So let's just make sure. Now, you will if you have a little recesses and ridges, it's not going to conform 100% perfect now because it's still just a decal. And it's got some flexibility, like this little recessed ridge here. It's not going to conform perfectly, but that's where your setting solutions will kick in later on. So don't worry about it just yet. Then we're going to go back on this shape. Again, you've got the same little recess here. But don't be tempted to push on it too hard because you don't want to rip it. So grab that there, push this down. And you're also trying to push away any little creases, but especially over a curved surface, you're asking a flat decal to conform to a curved surface, it's going to protest. It's going to go crinkly in corners and things like that. So where you're just gently squishing and squeezing and pushing around to get things to fit. This recess here, don't care. We'll sort that out later. When you're doing a decal that you're going to trim away, I'm not bothered if that bit's flopping around in the breeze. It's absolutely fine. All I'm interested in are the flat surfaces I need it to conform to. Anything else? My arm's going to sleep. Anything else? We'll worry about later. So that's there. That's that edge. Now this is the tricky bit because there is a bit of a gap there. So I'm going to hold these together. And I'm going to squeeze that down. You see how this is now meeting adjustment because it's pushed up. So we'll get some water on this. And we'll just gently tease it out. There we go. There we are. And we'll gently roll. I hope you can see this. It's difficult for me because I've got to do it in a way that I can see what I'm doing and hold three different things at the same time. That needs to come out, so that needs to be manoeuvred. Maneuver. Oops, easy. So doing this yourself on a model is tricky, but doing it yourself on a model when you're also streaming it and you've got to be in shot. Yeah, it's always fun. That can go there. Now I end up, end up with a bit of the red on the red there, which is not ideal. But I'm not going to fight it at this point because I don't want to undo all the rest of the decal so if the red goes on the red yeah deal with it so there we go so I can't be too violent sticking this down but we are going to have to trim that back later I just need it to stick on the yellow and stick on the red bit the gap in the middle 
that's for later times. So that's disappeared down there now. That's not ideal. Where has that gone? It's gone down there. So you can see how tricky this is. Come on. Why don't you come back over here a little bit? It's trying to stay away from this gap. But that's where I wanted the, the whole point of the thing is I wanted the red bit on the on the yellow paint, but it's not going that way. So what I might need to do is work it back here a bit. I might actually need to move the whole thing. Whoa. Let's just do it. Let's just while well, it's still movable, I think, hopefully. I hope it's still movable. Let's just do some adjusting. There's nothing wrong with this is one of the advantages of water slide decals. You can do this, you can move things around. See it's still movable, completely movable. Excellent. Move you down. Let's get you down so the tail has no choice but to be on the yellow. And if I put it there like that, then that means it only crosses here, which is much more practicable. So if I come back again, we shall start the process again. So if you squish the head down as the anchor point, make sure all the water comes out. If you do decide to this, it's always a tricky proposition doing this. One decal over a big area, especially with such different shapes and relief. It's more than worth it. The end result is always more than worth it. Alexa Doof Studios is in. Welcome, Alexa Doof. Uh, welcome, buddy. It's always worth giving it a try. It doesn't always work. There's no guarantee this will come up with anything but other than biblical ass. But it's worth a try. Because I say, if it does work, the results can be fantastic. Of a marking or a decal that covers a whole large area, the results, you can reap the rewards. But it's not guaranteed. Sometimes you just got to risk it for a biscuit. And go for it. How are you doing, Alex? Not seen you for a long time, dude. It's been a while. You catch me as I'm manhandling a Shanghai Dragons logo all over the butt end of this Cesarbi. Varying levels of success. It's not quite at the oh my god I hate everybody stage yet here, but it could go either way. Let's just be blatantly honest. Okay, so what I can do here, now I should really let it dry for a bit, but I'm going to take a risk. It's only got this one point of crossing here. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to try cutting the decal down that line. In fact, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to anchor it down first. Because it's going to be easier to deal with if I just cut it now. Because I can touch it in with black paint if I need to. But I need to. I need to do it so it's not moving around. I'm going to leave it for a little bit. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to not worry about the gap. I'm just going to get it anchored on both. There we go. Get it anchored down. See, it's pulling the whole decal every time it moves, which is a pain. That's a right royal pain you've got there. It's not easy, this. If you do decide to try this, it's not easy. But it is worth it. Absolutely, if it works. If it works, that's the tricky bit. Come on, you can come up. There you go. A diddly bum, a diddly bum, a diddly bum. Super match game. Right, so that goes there. That goes across there, like there, do you see? There. No, it still wants to move around. Even though I've anchored it down, there's so much water moving around here that it's it's being feisty. Do you see? Feisty. There we go. It does go over a couple of holes there, but that's fine. I'll come back to them later. That can go there.
Right, so what I'm going to try and do is slice that as gently as I can. Now it might go horribly wrong, it might make a mess of it, but because it is quite a thick decal, but it's not, I can tidy up with paint if I need to. They're going to come separate. So it's quite a gnarly, messy cut, but it's not the end of the world. Gently tease both sides away. Right, there we go. I think. There we go. So, what I can do is I can take that off. Get this on here. So, I can just focus on this now for a second. Get this puppy down. So, I can roll that over the edge, and where it has gribbled it a little bit, I can touch that in with paint. That's absolutely fine. If you're careful with the paint, you can make anything look fantastic. Mm -hmm, sweating like a sweaty thing right now, because this is quite tricky. Now, one thing I can guarantee you is this will require... Don't forget, of course, I'm doing uh, paint chipping, so if, if it does go horribly wrong, I can put a tactical paint chip is always a good option. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Yes, this will require a significant amount of decal solu setting solutions because we'll need it to really bed down to the surface. So what I do now is just put that back on there and just make sure I get it in the right place so it's all lined up. So let's wet this one again. So it can move freely. Get down here a bit. There you go, my son. You get in there like that. Apologies if you're having trouble seeing this. I'm having trouble watching it and doing it, so that can go there, that can go there. Yes, that's going to be perfect. And with a tactical paint chip or something similar, you will never know that the decal got a bit gribbled by the uh, destructive cutting process. So we'll just make sure we squish this down. Again, desperately try not to roll or move it anywhere because it was nicely lined up. Not worrying about holes in the bodywork because we can cut those out later and tidy them up. So we'll get that squished down. Take that tape off. Don't need that tape now. So that is on. It is on like Donkey Kong. It's busy work at what? No, I haven't picked up plastic in a long while, says Alexa Doof. Alexa, Doof. this is the thing, right? I have to apologize. I always read Alexa Doof's name as Alexa Doof, as in Alex Adoof. And it's not, it's Alex Dadoof. And I, I, I don't know. I never get it right. But it's lovely to see you, buddy. You've not picked up plastic in a long while. Yeah, real life often gets in the way of all the fun stuff. There's not much you can do. You just have to roll with it. But then again, you see, when real life takes you away from what you love doing, when you do get a chance to go and do what you love doing, it's a bit sweeter. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. But it is lovely to see you, buddy. I saw you in um, Zach's chat the other day when he did his, his stream yesterday. Right, so now we've got those on. One quick double check before we set anything in place. One quick double check. There we go. It's almost, almost. Oh, God, it's just a little bit off. A little bit off. Schweinhund. That's his nice dig. Can we move that a little bit? Has it got any? Yes. Yes. Huge success. Huge success. This is the trick of big ass decals over varied, there we go, perfect. If I can get that not to move, like a complete spam dangler, then we will be the pig in the proverbial brown stuff. Right, so we'll get that rolled down. Like I say, this is as tricky AF, but if it works, 
it's more than worth it it's absolutely more than worth it because there's nothing more visually interesting on your model than markings that go across panel lines or even just massively separate panels it's just an instant draw to the eye because that's what happens in reality so there we go that is on that is lined up perfectly so what we'll do now is use all the micro set in the world to get this bugger down so we're going to be quite generous now as always again if if you do know what you're doing with decals i've explained this a million times so apologies i always have to assume that perhaps somebody watching right now is absolutely new to the hobby and doesn't know so uh, i'm getting my micro set remember micro set is the blue one your equivalent uh, is mr mark setter if you're using those products instead uh, this is going to just help the decal lock into place settle into the recesses and adhere properly it'll help it basically it helps displace any excess water as well and make sure where possible it can settle as flat as possible to the surface it's quite aggressive stuff which is why you only really use it at the very start so we'll get the micro set in here now what i'm doing is i'm being quite generous but you will note that i am not really going much beyond the clear film around the edge that i trimmed because this is the trick this stuff can if misused it can eat into your gloss varnish if you've done a gloss coat first or if like me you're just working straight on the bare paint it can eat into your paint if you use it excessively so just try and put it over the decal and just a, a, like a, a tenth of a millimeter beyond the clear film because you want it to go over the edge so it can suck in and underneath and suck up like there suck underneath the decal you want it to get underneath the decal to suck it in so just go a little tiny bit over the edge but not much more otherwise you end up with a big splodge patch where you've painted it and it just becomes really obvious so we're going to put that on there uh, sadly i must enjoy vicariously through you lot well that's terrible dude Duh. it's not good well we shall try and make it as entertaining as possible so yeah we can go along the edge here where it can suck under suck it down and we can run we can run it over here because it'll help that decal see how that decal you may not see on camera but that decal goes over the edge and then underneath left to its own devices it might stick under there but it probably wouldn't with this stuff it just kind of forces it to stick to whatever surface is underneath so it has a better chance of going under and staying there and again here this little hole that's here there's a hole under there which uh, i'll need to cut away later because it's covering up a, a thruster vent so that's that done i need to leave that now for five or ten minutes uh, not using microsol asks phil lewis yeah microset is the first coat get the decal on there microsol it'll probably need many many coats of this so where microset is the first one that i use there's, there's a million different ways of using them but microset is the first one i use to get the decal down and conforming as much as possible and sucking down to the surface once that's dried for about five or ten minutes i can go in with the microsol uh, and that will then soften the decal can, successive coats of microsol will soften the decal each time i apply it and it'll stretch it and compress it and stretch and contract uh, and if that'll, the microsol will just soften it and help it conform to all those uneven edges and raised bits so it'll probably take quite a few coats of the microsol uh, but the microset is just the initial coat because i need to get it to recess in there i need to get it to recess to that groove i need to get it to recess as much as possible into that hole there so i can trim it away and round that edge Whew, that was quite stressful but i'm kind of glad it worked so when it does go on Yes, we've got a bit of a nick in the paint down there, where the tail is, but that's fine. I can say a well-placed paint chip, or I can just touch it in with some black if I need to, if I'm very careful, before I do all the matte varnishing and weathering, and that will be invisible. Now, when I do actually have this built, it's going to be like that. It's not actually going to be like that, 
because when I build it onto the butt area, this is actually going to be open. So I think this is going to be down here somewhere, but it'll have that continuity because it's supposed to be contiguous. I learned that word through Star Trek, contiguous. Contiguous ba ugly bags of mostly water. <laughs> I learned a lot of words through TV in Star Trek. Uh, right, so we could take in the world's biggest... Oh, God. I can get my entire face in this mug. I'm going to measure it so you can see... Because you've got no idea. It's it's at least two guthorms tall. For a start. Let's measure it with the tape measure. If I can get to tape measure. It is. In proper European centimetres. It is. Uh, eight. And a half centimeters tall, which is just over seven and a half inches. So it is, uh, what is it, 18 and a half? It is, it is that tall. <laughs> it holds two liters, it holds my entire contents of my kettle. My big Batman mug holds a liter, it, this holds two of them. So yeah, when I made this coffee, when I made this tea, it was two tea bags and six sugars, and that was just half of it because I can't make a two liters of it. A, I'd die of, of oversight hydration, and B, I'd die. Uh, so, okay, look, what have we got in chat? Because I missed it. Let's have a look. Uh, -do -do. Didn't we do the Django bit yesterday? It says Retro, but yes, but I have to do it every time. Just Django, come. I said just, it's not just Django, it's just Django. It's just Django. do it every day. My bitch shall never get old, says Django. Uh, by the way, I have a guitar build going on in the Boomhut Discord, and I've just put a new picture just now, says Django. Cool, make sure to put it in the Boomhut as well, in the actual Boomhut. Because the thing is, you might not realise, uh, guys, is that I know it's the model maker's Boomhut, but it's my group, and I decide what goes in there and what makes good content. And I'm kind of happy to say, perfectly happy to say, any kind of making counts whether it's a cake a guitar glass blowing a pie yeah um flower range i don't care as long as it's some kind of arty crafty upside down poppy arty crafty creation if you're being creative and you're making something and it's awesome then put it in there put it in the boom hut because um unlike some groups my aim with the boom hut is not to make a model making group although it is a model making group let's just be honest my aim is not to make a model making group my aim is to make a community of makers where it just happens that we mostly do model making but we're all creative we all like to make things it's all about having fun uh, and but that's all we're gonna do we're just gonna have fun and mess about so let, let's do that so that's why I say I, I'm happy for it to be any kind of creativity any kind of making will work for me so, yeah, if you're making a guitar, stick it in. Oops. A bit too much. Now, if you remember when I put these on the backpack a little while ago, I did the micro set. Now it's time to go in the micro sole. Now, these are flat decals on a flat surface. So, I'm not too fussed. They won't require a lot of micro sole. But it's still nice just to get them to flatten down as much as possible. It helps re reduce silvering. Uh, and because I'm doing this onto the bare paint, obviously, I've got to be conscious of silvering because you are trying to apply a clear film onto a rough surface. So a few coats of Microsol on these flat ones will help do that. And also Microsol does dissolve the clear film just a tiny, tiny bit. It's ever so slightly, it gets ever so slightly edible on the clear film. So not very much, but you will get a little tiny bit of the film being eaten away. So if it's a very thin film on a decal, you can dissolve the thin film away a bit and make it less obvious without dissolving the actual ink on the surface. So it's like dissolving the substrate a little bit. Just makes it less obvious. Uh, Current Panther Progress. A uh, jump chat. Current Panther Progress posted in the boom hut, says Phil Lewis. Cool. Uh, Pi says Paul at Team Inept. Thanks, Dad, says Phil Lewis. Babies, says Dad. No, we don't want to know about like babies and stuff because that's a different kind of making that we... that that We've all got our own bookmarks for that in, in that folder marked accounts. Or not porn, if you're honest. Uh, let's have a look. 
Paul says, to be honest, the pie would have benefited from more gravy, but that's just me. It may have had on the dish. And uh, Dad says, yeah, it was packed with meat. It was a very nice looking pie. Paul Di Tommaso is in. Hey, Paul. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You've just missed me fumbling with a big, massive decal on a really wibbly wobbly surface for ages, and it worked somehow. Now, what else have we got on this on this butt area? A uh, little tick mark. So we've got 38 and 37. We'll do them next. What time are we on? For it. Tell you what, what we'll do before that, because we are doing the big giveaway. Let me move this out of the way. We'll get the giveaway done and out of the way first. There we go. We'll do the giveaway first. Now, if you remember, uh, I'm not doing stickers today. What I'm doing today is that. You can't see it. I need to zoom out, don't I? Let me zoom out for you. It's totally random and irrelevant to anything. It's metal. It's even Guthorm likes it. It's a metal I poster thing. It's got this. Uh, Mama Fox bought that. I don't know why she bought one of these. I, I say I don't. I don't like small dogs. I can't stand small dogs, and I'm not a patriotic flag waver, so I don't know why I didn't. It's nothing to do. It. Anyway, I prefer big dumb dogs. It's big dopey dogs are my thing. But she got one of these, and they sent her two. So we got this spare to give away. Let me move Guthorm so I can wave this about a bit. So I'm going to give this away now because it is metal. Unfortunately, you're going to have to be in the UK to get this because I'm not going to be able to ship this outside the UK because of you know size and weight and cost. So it is, I'm afraid, you've got to be in the UK to win. You've got to be in it to win it because uh, I can just, if it's in the UK, I can stick it in an envelope, pop it in the post for you today. Well, not today, tomorrow, uh, and blop it in the post. It's not going to cost me more than a couple of quid. So, uh, Dad says, SOS call from door to his telling a kitchen has reached the window area. I'm needed to tiles to fit. Catch you later, folks. Take care, Dad, and remember to use clear tape on the tile so it doesn't shatter it. He, he's already gone. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes, so, um, you need to be in the UK. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask a question, and it's going to be the usual. The first person in chat to get it right wins this, if you're in the UK. Now, so I do apologise if you're outside the UK. As time goes by, I'll try and do more fun little giveaways where it's open to everyone. I don't mind sending stuff to anybody, but when it's something, you know, this kind of size and weight, I can't I can't just blop it in the post. So, Right, anyway. So, before we do anything... Oh, he says, I will. <laughs> yeah, a bit of tape. Uh, there you go. Say hi to uh, Junior, Junior Dad, Mrs. Junior Dad, at... Uh, moving on. Right, so what we're going to do. So, I'm going to ask a question. Now, by this point in the stream, as you all know by now... It's in a plastic package, by the way. That's why it's shiny. It's not actually shiny. It's just got the plastic film on it. Uh, as you all know, by now, there is always a lag between the visuals, what you can see here with all the eyes on your face. All the eyes on your face can see this. There's a lag between this and the actual chat. So, if first of all, if you're watching this and you want a chance to win it and you can see the chat here, but you can't see the live chat where you're actually typing, you need to be on the YouTube page where the stream is. So if you're watching this embedded in Hello or Facebook or Patreon or Twitter or somewhere else, you need to enter the chat. So before you do anything, you need to hit the YouTube icon that's down here in the bottom right somewhere. Where's my camera gone? There it is. You need to hit the YouTube icon that's down here in the bottom right underneath the player. And that will take to the YouTube page where you can see it on screen. Now, if you're on a mobile device, it might the chat might be underneath the video. So just scroll down a bit and you might see the chat there. So you need to, first of all, make sure you are on the YouTube where you can see the chat, because you need to do some typing for this. Uh, then, let's, let's have a look. Then, once you're in there, uh, what you need to do to get rid of any lag is, if you're already in here, you need to do this. If you, if you just if you swap over to YouTube, you don't need to do this, but if you, I'm just, wow, I'm just waffling now. You need to refresh and drag. Uh, to get up to date, hit the refresh button on your browser. And then when it refreshes, drag the slider all the way to the right. Or if you want to, just hit F5 and make sure you've not got anything that stops HTML5 autoplay. And that should get you up to date. So I'll give you a minute or two just to get to YouTube. Remember, if you want to enter, you do need to be resident in the UK. Because I can't send this outside the UK. Not for legal reasons, just because I can't afford to send it outside the UK at the moment. So, so let's, let's get it on. If you are also owed any stickers, I'll make sure they're included with it. Phil Lewis says, I refreshed and dragged and now my name is Susan. <laughs> Retro Rabbit says, Royal Danska Butter Cookies. <gasps> oh, yeah. You get them in Aldi. Oh, important news flash for anybody who is in the UK, by the way. Aldi are now selling Stollen again. Stollen for Christmas time. Stollen is in stock. Go buy it all. TK hates the stuff and he was shouting at me last night. Aldi Stollen is the best. 
Paul says, I do not want to win this awful prize. You're not eligible to. Mods can't enter. So there you go. Mods aren't allowed. Yeah, but it's, I, I don't do I don't do do not do little dogs. I can't stand small dogs. And I, I'm not patriotic, like flag wavy type. So UK, you doesn't really work, does it? Anyway, are we ready? Right. So I have a question and I have an answer. Uh, so here's the question. Are you already? It's not a num It's a you have to go and look this up unless you happen to know it. And it's a two part. I want two parts. I want, first of all, a name and a number. A name and a distance. Are you OK, a name and a distance to be correct. I'm going to change my glasses so I can see the date, the data on my thing. OK, so what I want to know is. Wait till I've, I'll say go. Wait till I finish the full question because I've got you've got two things. So what is the nearest closest nebula to Earth and how far away is it roughly? Go. The closest nebula to Earth and the rough approximate. I'll take a rough approximate distance. Closest nebula to Earth and the rough approximate distance. I do 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 do. You're all like what? What kind of question is that? I think this is the nearest ast astronomical body to Earth, this cup, because it weighs about three three suns. Paul at TMNet says the Butt Nebula, 150 metres. Remember, you have to be in the UK if you want to win. Do, 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 do. Alexa, Alexa Doof does not remember eating the cookies. Oh, well. Everybody's, everybody's like searching the internets now. This is the first time ever nobody's ever bothered Googling to win. <laughs> Nobody wants to win it. Alex to Doof. Oh, you're not in the UK. Do you do you remember you need to be in the UK to win? Do you, but I'm not in the UK. <laughs> Everybody's doing the internet searches. Uh, that is an enormous cup of tea. What have we got? We've got. Hang on. Uh, let's see how many. How many people are watching? I think we have 20 odd people watching. 26 people are watching. But I don't think anyone wants this. <laughs> I mean, there must be some of you in the UK, but I don't think anybody wants this because it's yeah, fully understood. I'll keep it going for a second or two. I do, 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 do. Come on, UK viewers. It's a, it's a pretty dog with the... And the yeah, I know. I know. Retro Abbott says, we've got this weird necklace with a galaxy inside the jewel. Does that count? Some guys in black suits talking dog tried to take it away from me a few years back. I'm honestly not surprised you had a question ready. I had to do a proper question. I had to do a proper question. I can't just pull a question out of my butt for something when I'm giving something away. David Butch, that model. Welcome, dude. I can't believe nobody wants to win this. Nobody's answered. It's not that hard to find the answer. In case you, if anybody missed it, I need to know the the closest galaxy to the. To, let me say to the UK then, the closest galaxy to Earth and the rough distance, approximate distance. No, cl sorry, closest nebula to Earth and the approximate distance. But you need to be in the UK to win. I don't think anybody. I might have to. Go, I'll go back and say, Mum, nobody wants it. Sorry. <laughs> It's fine if nobody wants it. I'll just give it back to Mama Fox and she can. <laughs> Team Inep says, I can believe that nobody wants to win it. <laughs> I mean, look at the bloody. Th yeah. I mean, George was saying, I really, really want it. But I said, you can't have it because you're not in the UK. But, you know, because I will eventually have to send the Cesarbi to George. So if nobody wants it, I'll just send it to George. <laughs> Bless him. Nobody wants it. I'll give it another another minute or so, and then we'll say, "Oh well, never mind." <laughs> what even is it? It's a it's a it's a piece of metal with an amusing picture on it. Mama Fox bought one for some reason, and accidentally this ended two, so she has two of them. And she said, "Do you want?" I'm like, "I don't want it." Do 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 do. 
do 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 <laughs> Phil if you win it you get sent it if you're in the UK you can do what you want with it when you get it <laughs> we didn't pay for it it's... I'm just palming it off let's be honest I'm palming it off on some. <laughs> Oh, wow, this is like the least successful giveaway anyway. I shall give it a bit, a, another minute, maybe. I do ba do ba do 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 Right, there you go. Tell you what, then. I am going to stop the clock there. And I'm going to, to do what Alex Dedouf Studio suggests. Because he has answered it twice correctly. And nobody else has answered it. Nobody wants it anyway. Uh, the answer is, of course, the Helix Nebula, which is 655 light years away, plus or minus 13 light years. Very, plus or minus 13 light years. That's very specific. It's about 650 light years from Earth ish. And Alex Tadouf did say Helix Nebula, about 700 light years. So, what I'm going to do, uh, because nobody wants. <laughs> This is, this is the fat kid that nobody wants on their team. I am happy to therefore uh, say that uh, Alex Tadouf has won, but he wants me to send it to Simon at Gundam UK. Because clearly, Alex Tadouf, you hate him, Alex, basically. You just hate him. You can't stand him. Because I wouldn't send that to someone I liked. <laughs> so, yes, I will do that then. I will send this to Simon. Uh, Alex, I know you've got his address. If you can send me a message on the Facebooks with his address, if it's supposed to be a surprise. And I'll just put a note in saying, don't... Blame me, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Although he'd probably watch this anyway. If Simon, if you're watching, forget you watch this bit. If you aren't watching, yeah. You just you, I can't believe you've just saddled him with it. I find it vastly amusing that nobody had there's 25 people watching. We've actually lost three people. <laughs> but nobody wanted this. It's like, no, don't want it, no. Because you know what? It's like you could have sold it on eBay if you'd won it, but never mind, never mind. Right, I'll put, uh, I shall put that there. No, not Cy Reynolds, we're doing Cy Reynolds. I'm about to write Cy Reynolds on there. Do you know? There we go. Right, so, you bought me an email or send me a message on Facebook with the address. I'll send it off to him. And he'll be like, what the bloody, what? Oh, because he won't know. Like, what the hell's that? <laughs> You're a cruel man, Alex, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right, next week, I'm going to give away a broken gardening fork with one tine missing that I found in the garden near the pond. <sighs> uh, patient X says Andromeda, 2 million light years, but the prize sucks, so I don't want it, lol. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Nebula, not a galaxy, but it is true. It is a sucky gift. We should get a selection of these damn things for George. Thing is, when I said that I was going to give that away, I knew George would be like, I want that, can I have it, can I have it, I want it. I knew he'd want it, because he loves British stuff. Right, so that was fun. You all gave me a big fat middle finger. <laughs> this is brilliant. Here's a prize you can have. No, I'm all right, mate, cheers. It's like, here's a free thing. No, I'm, I'm good. Oh, that was hilarious. Right. Let's get back on with the with the fighting or whatever it was. Uh, where's my glasses? Right there we go. I'll just close that down on that. No, don't save it. There we go. Right. So ah, that was hilarious. Christopher Kobeck. Hello, welcome, Christopher. Also welcome, uh, Patient X. Uh, Dave Bench and Belly. Uh, Christopher Kobeck and Patient X. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? What are you working on and what are you having for your dinner tonight or what have you had for your dinner tonight? It's a very important question. Very, very important question. Fork sounds more exciting, says Alex. Uh, fork handles. Fork handles. Right, so we've got that on there. The micro set has had five minutes in which I failed, utterly failed to give away some free stuff. Wow, you guys are harsh audience, man. You're a, you're a tough crowd. Here's some free things. Nah. That's hilarious. I love it. Oh, that was so funny. I'll go downstairs and I'll be like, hey, Mama Fox, guess what? What? Nobody wanted it. It's that bad. <laughs> I don't know why she ordered it. I just... She's ordering all these little sort of metal poster things, like the little metal print posters, like, you know, old vintage Bisto posters and things. They're quite cool. They're quite good. Put them up on the wall. What was she all that for? Ugh. It's the kind of thing a Daily Mail reader would have on their wall. 
which is unfortunate. Ugh, Daily Mail readers. Uh, Totema Gaijin is in. Welcome, Gaijin. Is it? Am I getting it wrong? Should it be Totemo Gaijin? Or should it be Totemo Gaijin? Or Totemo. Totemo Gaijin. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. I'm not going to live that down, am I? I'm going to think of something better next time that's even worse. That was like the prisoner cell block H of, like, giveaway prizes. Now, this is the micro sol. Remember? So, what this will do... Uh, if you ever, if you do get micro set and micro skull, micro sol even, don't don't read the blurb on the bottles because they both say exactly the same thing pretty much. Uh, micro sol is the less aggressive of the two, and this is designed just to soften the decal very gently, eat away the clear film a little bit, and help it bed down into any recesses and grooves or anything like that. Uh, one of the use for micro set, of course, uh, and I don't know why I'm saying of course, because if you don't know this, you won't know this. One of the use for micro set is to actually remove decals, because micro set is more aggressive. And while it can help lock your decal down at the start, you can also use it to totally remove a decal. Uh, don't have access to this in Korea, says Alex. Uh, Alex, yeah, it's, it's the same kind of stuff as uh, Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer. If you're talking about Set and Sol. Mr. Mark Setter is Micro Set and Mr. Mark Softer is Micro Sol. It's the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that Mr. the Mr. Hobby ones are a little, little bit more aggressive. So you've got to go a bit more carefully with them. If there's on bare plastic, if you're just putting decals on a on a bare plastic gumpler, they're fine. You can slap. You can basically. Uh, oh, I didn't have the button ready. Slap it on. Yeah. So if you're on bare plastic, you can just do that. If you ever paint, you've got to be a bit more careful. I'd use an old paintbrush. They do come with brushes on the lids, but they're big fat brushes. So I'd use a paintbrush. That's there. Uh, let's have a look uh, we have uh, David Butch that model says belly with sausage egg and cheese bagel from McDee's bench still the pox walkers yes uh, are you doing Totemo Gaijan Gaijan Gaijin Gaijin Totemo it was the Totemo bit that I wasn't sure of with the pronunciation you see if it was like a sort of Japanese, totemo, totemo gashi. Oh, oh, sniffly nose. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. all kinds of fluids. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh. Sudden fluid crisis. Ooh. Uh, right, so we'll leave that for a minute. The trick with this stuff is, if you are doing multiple coats, um, just wait till it looks dry. You'll see there on that, it's got a few little lumps and bumps. Maybe you'll see in the light there. That's purely as it expands and contracts and does that. Don't worry about it. Don't be tempted to squish it down. That's what you don't want. I'll zoom back in again for you a little bit. But again, if you, if you find the zoomed in quality is a bit rubbish, let me know. You can see it's got a few little lumps and bumps on it. Just there, like a sort of teenager's bad day. They will eventually go away. They're either little air bubbles or it could be stuff on the surface of the paint, little bits of dust or even just in the texture of the paint. They will hopefully go away eventually. If not, I can always kind of squidge them down a bit. And if you get any air bubbles like that, if you, any of those are air bubbles, what you can do is just, if you've done a few coats and you let it all dry and it's still there, just prick it with a pin and then give it one more coat and it will pop the air bubble and let it settle down. So we'll keep an eye on those. They might go away. But as we do more coats of the micro set, it should hopefully get it set into all these curves. There's a recess there. There's this little lip here. You can see there right now, what you've got is an edge like this like that and then the decals like that over the edge so it's coming here and then down and then like that so it's not sitting flush what the set will do is force the decal to do that eventually although if, you, if you're struggling you can after a couple of coats when it's dry just very gently encourage it with the cotton bud and then keep applying more coats uh, let's have a look now i'm getting hungry says dave yes uh, patient X says, bench is the MG camphor. Belly will be shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. Yes. Uh, how does this stuff compare to Japanese equivalents? Tamiya Mark softer, fitter. Uh, I don't know about the Tamiya stuff. But I think I already answered you with the Mr. Hobby stuff. It's a little, they're a little more gentle than Mr. Mark Setter and softer. 
I think they're actually a bit thicker as well. But the weird thing is, this one smells like vinegar, and that one smells like Tamir Extra Thin. So, go figure. I have known people use Tamir Extra Thin to help set decals, but it, I, I wouldn't. Uh, -do -do -do. Uh, so, very gauging. Not just a foreigner, very foreigner. Is that what Totimo Gaijin means? Totimo Gaijin. Uh, Alexa Doof says, So Disney. I really wish I could speak Japanese. I really wish I could speak Japanese. Awesome. Sounds fantastic. There's nothing I think more relaxing than watching, especially like any kind of craft stuff, but watching, uh, a, a, say, a model maker or even a craftsman, Japanese model maker or craftsman, do stuff and talk about it because they're always doing stuff but they've always got that really quiet spoken voice and they're just talking dead quietly and dragging out the s's and it's like oh, i could sit and listen to that all day just the soft spoken japanese just makes me just all sleepy and warm tea can't, i can't do soft spoken and gentle but especially when they, they like they say something that ends in an s so they drag the s out I just, oh, I could listen to that all day. Uh, right, so that's there. We've done that. I need little little ones to put on there. So we've got some little littlies. Alex, Alex says, Nihon no... Oh, I can't read this now. I'm going to try it. Nihon ni sundi imasu ka? Imasu ka. Nihon ni sundi imasu ka? Something Japan, something, something. I can recognise Japan, obviously. Nihon. Nihon ni sundi imasu ka? I love the way that a lot of the words, you just kind of squidge them all together. Like in German, where you... <laughs> it was Japanese for slap it on. I think in Japanese, Ted would actually just say... Uh, slap it on. I think they'd just put a new on the end. Slap it on you. <laughs> That'd be it. It'd be, a, it'd be a lone phrase. I can't write kanji, says Alex. And uh, Gaijin says, Not anymore. Went for study abroad in Sapporo and worked in Guma and Kyoto for a while. I love to speak Japanese. Unfortunately, I can't even glue the arms on Resin Death Corps Krieg, so me learning Japanese would be well out of possibility. I was asking, do you live in Japan? Nihon ni sundimasu ka? Yeah, it's like German. In German, they just put... If you've got... If you have five words to describe something, they just put all those five words together and that becomes its name. In Japanese, they kind of just make it all one sound. All the words just become one sound. It's lovely. Uh, right, I'm not getting any work done here. So we want to do uh, some butt decals. So we'll start on this side while that one's still doing its curie curie. Uh, so I want uh, 38 and 37, 40 and 40, 37. Ooh, we've got 43 there, but nothing on that side. Okay. Well, we'll start with 38 and 37 then, will we? We'll get that started. Got to be careful around this decal now. 38 and 37. Nutiare. Nutiare. It loses something without Ted. Nutiare. <laughs> this doesn't really work, does it? Uh, slap it on. 38 and 37. I do, in one way, I love Ted to bits, but I do feel bad that his, his, his enduring legacy, thanks to me and Chris and others, might just be, slap it on, might be his entire legacy for the rest of time. That's kind of a harsh... <laughs> Harsh legacy oh, to leave behind. <laughs> Ted, the slap it on guy. <laughs> we were kind of hoping, really, we were kind of hoping when we did it that it would just kind of take a life of its own and become like a proper meme and go viral. And you'd see people using it all the time, but it didn't. That didn't happen. I've just oh, it's thirty-eight and thirteen. That's a wrong one. Oh, your spoon. That's the wrong decal for a start. So I'll put that decal over to one side. Safe there. Remind me, folks, that decal is there and not somewhere else. I want 37. There we go. That's it there. Yes, we were hoping the slap it on thing would go viral, but it, did, it never did. I guess we don't know enough people on 4chan <laughs> or anywhere like that. So never mind. It was worth a try. Because then Ted would become an internet legend. A legend. And that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I, there's nothing more I love than when you read stories, especially on things like Kotaku and stuff, and Gizmodo, where they, they interview someone who, who became, who had a meme, and became like famous for a meme. Like, you've got Scumbag Steve, or you've got the girl in front of the house that's on fire, and you've got the Irma Gerd, Gersbumps, and all these people, they find them, and they actually inter- interview them and say, well, how do you feel about becoming a meme? Because it's always like they've just put their image somewhere on Facebook or something, and then somebody's found it, and it becomes a meme through 4chan or something. Uh, do, 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 do. Alex says it's funny I literally just booked a flight to Tokyo for Saturday and coming back Sunday uh, Gaijin says it makes him think of infomercials like he's selling something how do I use it slap it on Google suggests Haru the verb is for stuff like stickers yes it depends on exactly what you're sla- slapping flex tape slap it on <laughs> so we were kind of hoping to give Ted some immortality by becoming a meme, but it never happened. Never mind. Ted is clearly just too cool for the kids today. And cotton bud. Cotton bud. Oop. I don't even know where this decal's supposed to. I'm just like waving it around like I know where it's supposed to go, and I'm not even thought about that bit yet. Kind of here. I'm going to make it up and just put it there because that's the only reference point I've got. There we go. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Put that there. And that's the wrong way up. Yay! Soko ni sori o nagaru. Oh, nagaru. Hang on. Soko ni sori o nagaru. Throw it on there. My pronunciation will be, of course, ridiculously bad. Soko no sori. Soko no. Soko ni sori o nagaru. Throw it on there. Of course, the big thing with Japanese is is the intonation is vitally important, and I don't know what the intonation would be. So it's not just the pronunciation. So, soko ni sore o nagaru. You kind of have to say it softly. It doesn't really work. I can't see it. I can't see anybody in Japan shouting anything. <laughs> uh, throw it on there. Is that what that means? Soko ni sore o nagaru. Hatate. Hatate. Hatete. It doesn't help. As the pronunciation, I still can't. Hey, tete. Hey, tete, tete, potato, potato, potato. I can't. I can't help it. Oh, it's been one of those days. Oh, I don't know. Oops, wrong brush completely. Do, 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 do. Uh, Butsuketiare. I, I kind of sound Italian. Butsuketiare. Hit it. That might work too. Hatayete. Hatayete. Hata. It just sounds like. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound Japanese. Hatayete. It sounds like Hawaiian or something. Yes, the uh, All Blacks there, like Maori, it sounds like Maori or something, like the, the All Blacks are coming onto the pitch and they're doing the Hatayete before the match starts. You kind of have to go through something more colloquially and not too literal, use the feeling of it, says Gaijin. Teaming up says, Buka- oh no, wait, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> lol. Yes, I think it would really just be, Srap- Srapu it on, no. Srapu it on, no. Srapu it on, srapu it on, srapu, srapu, or just srapu, you'd like, they'd squish it down. Dikaru srapu, there you go, dikaru srapu. I take all Google translations with a large pinch of salt, yes, this is correct. I would love, I say, I'd love to learn Japanese, I'd love to learn German as well, but I, my brain is just not even capable of such things. I learned French at school, and I've forgotten all that. I regret that I didn't learn German. 
but yeah, learning languages now at my age is not going to happen. It's not very likely, I don't think. 43. 43, where's 43? 43 is there's 43. And we're cutting. Do 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 The first thing I ever learned saying in Japanese though, and I'll probably get this wrong. If someone can tell me where this comes from, I will give you a sticker. The line is, very roughly, Bokudoa. Soto da wishti kanang da yo. Sa. Mododo. Now it may not be a full sentence, it might be a like half a sentence there, I don't know. It's just it's what I remember. Bokudoa. Soto da wishti kanang da yo. Sa. Mododo. None of you will get where it's from, but if you can tell me where it's from, I will give you a sticker. It's a quote from something. Bokudoa. Soto da wishti kanang da yo. Sa. Mododo. And one of my pieces of music is called Samo Dodo from that quote. So. <sighs> Frequently, Google Translate changes computer to contraption. <laughs> uh, and the live translate option, YouTube always throws up some very int Oh, yeah, watching anything in Japanese with the live translation on is hilarious. Uh, the boot in that word is the same as the one in Butsukaru. Butsukaru! Wari wari. The one thing I've never been able to get a decent translation for is ware ware, which is kind of it's kind of a nebulous phrase that you look up the different translations and people give it. It's like saying hey or oi or wait wait oi oi. No, or another one is like when they go oi oi. It's one of those like nebulous phrases that you know colloquially, but nobody can really give you a decent explanation of what it actually means. I love it. I do like actually when you watch any anime, especially you know. Um, Gumpler stuff, and there's always a character. It was you, you heard it a lot in uh, Iron Blooded Orphans, where a character will just go oi oi, but there's no way to say it without sounding like an Englishman trying to say oi oi, like sounding like somebody from London. Oh, are you alright, mate? I can't say it without sounding like somebody from the East End, but it is a great sound. Oi oi. Uh, slap it on. Sorry, oh, Hirachi. Sorry, oh, Hirachi. Slap it on. Slap it. Dikarus. Dikarus. Slap it. What a slide. Da slap it. No, that's. What a slide. Slap. No, it doesn't really work, does it? It doesn't even work as loan words. Yeah, so. And anybody get it yet? Boku doa. Soto doa. HD. Kanang deo. Sa. Mododo. Nobody's going to get it. But you will win a sticker if you do. And you don't have to be in the UK. You can be anywhere you want. Retro Rabbit says some classic phrases. You what, mate? You want to have a go? Oh, I don't think that's Japanese, mate. You know what I mean? No, mate, that's not Japanese. That ain't. Nah. <laughs> You're having a laugh, ain't you? <sighs> Sorry, Hirachi. Uh, next we have little fiddly ones, uh, 40 and 39. There's no counterpart to that. There's one that goes here, but there's no counterpart to it. How very strange. Uh, Totem Ogajun actually says, actually, and then writes some Japanese, so we won't try and pronounce that because don't actually know what the characters mean. Uh, 40 and 39. Forty. Thirty-nine, there we go. Yes, I mean I think I could probably learn a little bit of speaking Japanese, but learning an actual whole new written language, abs because if I if it's in English, if it's like a written in the sort of standard Roman alphabet, I can figure out pronunciations and stuff and I can use but a language that just uses a whole different alphabet, I've got no chance at forty eight, pushing forty nine in a few weeks. To even begin to learn that. Kutsukete. 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 Dave says, you own it all. Kutsukete. Kutsukete. Uh, which means attach it. 
That's what came up when I googled slap it on in Japanese. Let's just stick to the original. Slap it on. In case anyone was trying to figure out what we're all talking about, that's that's we're trying to translate that into Japanese. Dikaru slapu. How about like a proper anime phrase would be like action slap. What would action slap be? You know, like when somebody, like when you watch a gumpler uh, anime and they like the person who's in the, the, who's piloting the gumpler shouts the command out, like, you know, um, fist off, do, and they, they shout it out in Japanese and you get all the movement lines when they go ah, like that. If they said action slap, what would action slap be? Like that was a special Gumpler move, action slap. You know, they often, they often shout out the, the, what they're doing. Although often it's just done in loan word, in loan word Japanese. So it's... Here's another question. That here, oh, actually, here's a question. Uh, which decal is which? There we go. Here's a question. In Japanese, when they... When they, as they regularly do, they use loan words. So they just take a word, say in English, and they just commandeer it. And they, they adjust it a bit for their own pronunciation abilities, but they use a loan word. And then it just becomes a spoken loan word. Like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Like, for example, whereas. Uh, I was watching one, I can't remember what it was, but there was a guy referring to the Lightning Gundam. But instead of saying Lightning Gundam in Japanese, he just says, Lightning Gundam. So he just said Lightning Gundam, or he used the word Lightning in English as a loan word. And like Toto Mogation said there, Akushon Surapu. Akushon Surapu. What, is there a name for that kind of thing where they just take the English word and, and repronounce it? What's that called? I know in written, in writing, it's a loan word. And they kind of just adjust it a bit because of the pronunciation, because they don't they don't pronounce words in the same way, because they're not they're not used to pronouncing L's and so on. So, but is there a name for it? An official name, I mean. Now you can see here what I'm doing with this big black dragon. Bam, alone. Whoa, blood dragon. Sorry, no. Uh, this thing here is now that the the last coat of micro sol has dried. I'm just going along and I'm gently pressing it down. I'm rolling it to get rid of any of those air bubbles that were down there. There was an air bubble in there, so I've rolled it away. There are a few little sticky up pimply bits, but I think that's just the texture of the paint underneath. I'm gently pushing in here where the decal was over that edge. Just gently, I'm not I'm not gonna rip it. It's still got some stretch to it. That the microsol softens it so you can stretch it a little bit. But you have to do this when the decal is dried. When the sorry, microsol is dried. Remember the microsol expands it, stretches it out, and then stretches it back. After about five minutes, it's stretched back and it's dry. If you do it when it's all stretched out, you'll mangle it up, you'll you'll ruin it, you'll rip it, and it'll be horrible. Wait till it's all flattened out again, then you can go in and start squishing it. And what it's doing is very gently pushing it into all the recesses, all the little recess panels like here because it's got a little bit of flex left and I can just stretch it a little bit into these recesses but it's very important that you do this when it's when the microsol uh, sorry the microsol in yes yeah, correct microsol is dried so give it about five or ten minutes from the last coat go in do that and then what you can do is uh, Phil Lewis is off need to go for a bit see you all on the meme model stream tonight yeah see you later buddy thanks for coming in once I've done that squishy squishy, I can go in and I can give it another coat. Hopefully, just a little bit of squishy squishy will help it go back even more into the recesses. Now what you can do as well, I found sometimes, if it's a particularly stubborn curve or recess, what you can do is try and compress it with something warm, like get a get a, a cotton bud and warm it up, or a bit of, say, tissue or something, or even a warm towel, and press that down. And sometimes that can just heat it a little bit and it'll move into a, a curve or a corner a bit better and then you can apply this again and it'll just help it stretch 
So it will require repeated coats of this. I mean, I've, I've, it varies from decal to decal. You just keep applying it till you're happy with how the decal looks. Some decals, it can be one or two coats of Microsol. Some it can be 10. I've had decals that have taken 20 or more coats because you're just basically convincing it to go where you want it to go. And it takes time. It's not always not going to put a fight up. Uh, uh, Phil Lewis is off. Thanks for coming in. I've just done that bit, haven't I? It's called the borrowed word, says Alex. He's an English teacher. Yes, yeah, so that's what I meant by loan words. But I don't know if there's a different name for it when you use it as a spoken. I know in, in, in written, it's like a borrowed or a loan. I don't know if there's a different name for it when it's actually spoken. It's fascinating there. Akashon Sarapu. Toilet is toda. Toida. I do love the loan words, though. Foxism says Dave at Butcher that model. Yeah, that's probably fairly valid. Uh, now we'll do this one here as well. This one we've got the pushy pushy down. I want to get it in that recess there, but I don't want to rip it just yet. So I'm going to push it into that recess even more. Although there's no actual the hole, the hole on the other side of that recess, but we still need to deal with it. I need to make sure it pushes down there. This one won't take as many coats of Microsol because apart from that little recess thrust to hole there, there's no actual curves or edges for it to conform to it's just a flat surface so apart from this bit here where it goes underneath which i need it to do better uh, on here you can see there's some texture to it but that's because when i dry brush the yellow if you remember from earlier episodes i dry brush the yellow and the, the yellow paint we discovered is not the best for dry brushing because it comes up with a kind of orange peel texture the other paints other colors in the range don't it's just these yellows for some reason so this might only need two or three coats. There's a panel line there, and there's this bit here. So you may only need a couple of coats for that, but we'll, we'll do more on the recess bit there to keep that going in. Uh, do, 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 do. Loan words from English. In Japanese, loan words from English are called wasaigo. Wasaigo. Swake of the enormous tea. Oh. Oh, what time are we on? Oh, come at ten to five. I'm guessing nobody got nobody got my quote then. Boku doa, sutu to h di kanangdeo, sa mododo. If you can tell me where that's from, I will send you a sticker. You nobody will get it. Uh, that's them stickies there. We've got anything else to go on the butt area? Oh yes. Uh, 45 and 44 need to go down there. Do -do 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 -do. 45 and 44. 45. There we go. 44. Put that there. Always put your decal sheet nowhere near the water supply. Have it on the other side of the desk. Do 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 I would love to go to Japan, but I think I'd I'd have to go either with someone, or I'd have to go and when I was there, like you know, to hang out with someone who was kind of resident there and not necessarily spoke Japanese or was Japanese, but somebody who was familiar, because I'd just I'd just break them myself. I couldn't even walk into a, a restaurant and be able to order food because I get it wrong. I am that rubbish. And it's not easy. <laughs> if, like me, I've said before, I'm a socially awkward penguin. Um, it's not easy for somebody who's like me, a socially awkward penguin, to walk into, say, somewhere, a restaurant that doesn't even speak the same language and I don't know the language and I've got to ask for something in public. But, yeah, I just I, I explode in a, in a ball of self-loathing. <laughs> so I'd have, to, I'd have to basically be like staying with someone who was who lived there uh team Inep says you replicated my wet palette fox no i have not because although it's wet your wet palette you can't see it in chat there's a little pile of water here with the decals in um this is just water and i can wipe it off your wet palette is like a layer of paint that thick on your cutting mat is it from attack of the titans or the only proper anime nope never seen attack of the titans do, do, do. And if you think that's proper anime, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, right, these need to go where exactly? Ow! Bang my head on the lamp. That needs to go there. So I'll put that. I'll do this one first. Oops. That can go. Where does it go? Where exactly does this go? It goes uh, there. There we go. It goes there. You see, like that. You see, lovely. <laughs> get these justificated then we'll have a quick look at the chat again doop spilling the water <laughs> yes tonight's dinner for me because it's a live stream night will be beef madras yes with the with the with the packet of super rice yes and breads to make the curry sandwiches yes utterly healthful dinner Yes, this is correct. It's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. I think I think you know if I, if you're going to go somewhere like Japan as a as a Westerner with no concept of the language or the or you know specifically very little concept of the specific culture because there is a very specific way of life there and culture and so on but i think i know they're very tolerant of of gaging and you know they're very tolerant of the outsider and they'll they'll never criticize you and stuff but i think it's the kind of thing that it's suited it's the kind of thing you need to be kind of a extrovert type character open to that sort of thing for an introvert like me i just i just curl into a ball and die um pronunciation itself is pretty easy it's based on five syllables if you see r e u Eh and uh, or oh, oh. It's the damn kanji characters that are a pain. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of the whole written thing that. <laughs> Most language you can get away is ah, e, u, er, and o, oh, but it's just all the writing and the structure and everything. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, Gajin says, That was my first week in Japan. I hold up in my room. <laughs> And you know what? You're probably still doing something wrong socially while just being holed up in your room. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Because there's so much that we just don't know. In terms of the social norms, societal norms, you're probably still doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like you spend all week in your room, you walk out and somebody gives you the look and you're like, oh, what am I doing now? No, that's the thing. That is the one thing about Japan you always hear is that the... The, the people in Japan will never, ever call you out for getting something wrong. I mean, I could be wrong here, but I've always read that it's quite a xenophobic culture, but also quite tolerant of the outsider. I don't know. I've never been. I only know what I read with my eyes. A little bit of micro set on these because I forgot to put some on when I applied the decals. Uh, I've got no idea what Shiyu Farts in Bed is going to be cooking, says Dave, for his dinner. Uh, I wanted to go to Japan for a holiday in two years' time until we look at the cost, so Shiyu Farts is taking me to South Korea. Can't afford Japan, South Korea. There you go. Done. Yeah. Don't leave any chewing gum on the floor. You'll be flogged. Uh, what else do we have? I've just applied that to there and it's supposed to go on here. Oh well, don't care. It's all fun. I've got many, many other decals I can add. Uh, I think what we should do is on the tailpipe area here. Ooh, uh, matron, matron, I say. See, these are supposed to all go around the little thrust events, but I've not put any of them near any of the thrust events. But I don't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, that's it for the back end, I think. We've done the backs of the legs. We've done the butt, enormous butt of buttitude. We've done the backpack there. We've done the tubes, fuel tubes. We've not done the um, doobery dooby doos, the, 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 the things yet. We've not done the space taxis. I could do them, couldn't I? Uh, although it's coming up to five o'clock, uh, so what I'll do, I'll do a couple more coats of this. I might not start them. I might do a couple more coats of the stuff, and then might give it, call it a show, because I've got, a, I've got the show tonight for emails, haven't I? So, 
Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, says uh, Gaijin. Some people are genuinely curious and some people can't be bothered because they have had bad experiences. Uh, Alex says, but a flight from South Korea to Japan is like $30. Why settle for Korea? Alex says, I live here and I hate Seoul. Gaijin says, for the barbecue. Alex says, good point. You can eat you can, all you can eat beef for about 20 bucks. See, what I want, what I want, I want to get on a plane. I want to go to Japan. I want to walk into a small traditional eatery. And I basically want to eat the um, never-ending mystery m uh, noodle beef bowl from Persona 4. And I would get to the bottom of that bowl and I would level up all my stats. Because every time you eat that damn beef bowl in Persona 4, I get the massive hunger for beef and noodles. Every time. I'm like, oh, I really, I really want this in real life now. I don't know. Yoshinoya Gai Gyudon. I don't know if that's what I was saying or what Alex was saying, uh, what Gaijin was saying. What was it called in Persona 4? The, the beef, it was an endurance test. It wasn't mystery bowl, it was the something, it was the, a bottomless beef bowl. It was just basically noodles and beef and oh. That's a shame, Shiyu Farts and the kids only just came back from three weeks in Seoul. They loved it, but then again, Shiyu Farts and the girls love flipping K-pop. Yeah. It was Dave that introduced me to the new Korean death noodles, <laughs> for which I absolutely thank him. What was it called? Him? What was it called? Him? Was it the bottomless beef bowl? I can't remember the exact name. I think it was bottomless beef bowl, but I'm not sure. Got that. It's a good soundtrack. That I've, I, uh, I watched some of the Persona Five stuff, and I've got to say, I, I, it engendered no interest in me. But I was so enamoured with Persona 4, I actually went out and bought a PSP Vita. I didn't have a PlayStation. Uh, not a PlayStation. I've got a PlayStation 2, actually. But I wanted to play Golden because it had improvements on the base game. When I was there, I got addicted to Japanese curry and kitsune udon. Udon with a slice of fried tofu over the top. Yes, I've heard about that. Kitsune is fox, though. So it's fox udon, which means it's my udon, which means you need to give it to me. I need to eat all of it all the time. Mm. Kitsune udon. Coco Ichi is my jam. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? They're drying nicely. Let's do... Have I got anything that's a one-off? So I'd have to do like 35 different decals. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Tell you what we'll do. Tell you what I'm going to do. I didn't enjoy Persona 5 as much as 4. It dragged on too long. I didn't play it, but... I loved Persona 4 because I fell in love with all the characters. I mean, who can't like Chie? Oh, Chie was awesome. All the characters were awesome. But Persona 5, I watched all the trailers and all the quick play, you know, let's plays and quick, and I'm like, eh, don't care. In the same way, I didn't care about Persona 3. They were all just a bit. But Persona 5 just had a certain, a certain silliness to it and a certain, you just love the characters so much. Uh, you know, it's just, oh, you know, Chie and Yukiko, oh, just great. All the characters, whose names I can't remember now, half of them, were just perfect. I mean, Chie, I was in love with Chie. Who kind of loved Chie? Chie's awesome. Everybody wants Chie to be the, the girlfriend like Chie. It would be fantastic. She's fe feminine, and, and but she also likes like Kung Fu and will whoop your ass if you break her DVDs. <laughs> That's great. Whereas everything else just seemed a bit serious. So I don't know. Right, we've got some decals to put on the belly area. Uh, we've got precisely two decals, I think, for that. Zwei Dikaru. I think just two. Uh, 16. I never actually finished Persona 4 Golden, though. I watched the entire playthrough on Giant Bomb, obviously, and that's what got me to it. And then I got I got the, the Vita, and I got Persona 4 Golden. Because uh, it, it was like, I could get, I've got a play on PS2, but the, the Golden was much better. So I got that. And then I got mo I got a chunk of the way through it. Uh, but um, 
I lent the PSP to my friend after a while because she was poorly sick at the time. And I said, listen, you like this, you'll like this Persona game. It's exactly your kind of jam. And then it's that was years ago. <laughs> I never kind of asked for it back after that, so I never got round to asking it back. That's a Chia Yukiko Rise, Naoto, and Teddy. Oh Teddy. Teddy was brilliant. The doofus friend and the big guy. What was the doofus friend called? Uh uh the, the one that falls off his bike and what was his name? Who's whose dad ran the local Juness? Oh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name. Yeah, actually, uh, to the point that I actually got myself made a couple of uh, Juness mugs, my coffee mugs. My favourite coffee mug is a Juness mug, but the handle's cracked. And the other one I used for um, the doofus friend. Fox, obviously, says Team Inept. Forgot about Naoto there. You have to try playing Attack on Titan on the PC. After an hour, you'll know what a finger cramp is. You have to move across the keyboard like an epileptic spider. Yosuke, that's it. Yosuke. Oh, yeah. Yosuke was just hilarious. The whole bit where they fall into the TV because he's dying for a wee and he knocks the knocks the protagonist <laughs> into the television. That was just fantastic. Yosuke is just like... And that, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. I've not played Persona 5. I'm not even... I don't have a PlayStation, but... I kind of got the impression, though, from all the materials that were available and watching people play it, that it wasn't funny like that. It didn't have those kind of characters. And that's why I was like, eh, not, not interested. I think the thing that sold me on Persona 4 was it was just... It was silly and dumb, and that just makes everything better. By miles. Yosuke. Like, the whole bit... Oh, the whole bit with... Um, uh, the whole bit with Kan uh, with uh, Yosuke and the protagonist, where they've got Yukiko and Chie, and they go. Um, wait, no, I'm, I'm I'm I was about to say something, then I was totally referring to Gundam Bill Fighters. There, that's totally the wrong thing. I was about to refer to the swimming costume thing, but that was actually Gundam Bill Fighters. <laughs> it was totally the wrong, even franchise, even. Because now I'm getting confused. Yosuke reminds me of. Um, What's his name from Gundam Bill Fighters? The the chap from the alternative dimension who's got no social ability knowledge whatsoever. He just wants to eat. Oh, what was his name? What's his name? Re, re, uh, uh, yeah. I can't remember names. You know the one. Yeah, Kanji was an interesting character because Kanji was kind of like the, the denying... The, the self-denying gay character, kind of. Which I know in Japan is not something that's ever really discussed. Sort of. Um, I need water, what am I doing? It's not something that's often represented in uh, in Japanese medium. So it was, it was interesting. Maybe not handled brilliantly, but it was, it was all right. I read the blurb for Persona 3 and Persona, you know, that, that seemed very serious. And I read the blurb for Persona 5 and it's like, yeah, it all seems very serious. And I don't, after 4, I can't really go back to, it's a bit like if you bought Deadly Premonition 2 and it was well made and serious. And you'd be like, well, that's rubbish. I want jank. I want things to not be worked and be broken. I need, I need Deadly Premonition more not deadly premonition the professional version <laughs> yeah never finished that never finished deadly premonition it, it beat me i think i would have done if it wasn't for the janky controls because it was so alien the controls were so alien to me after years of first person shooters and just general first and third person controls like for normal people the controls in there uh, Deadly Premonition were just too weird. So you can only hope that Deadly Premonition 2, whatever it's called now, I think, uh, will be quite, uh, just as bizarre and stupid and weird, but with better controls. Mmm, FK in the coffee.
Downloaded Eve online two days ago, and yeah, I'm done with that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. If you like spreadsheets, yeah. Uh, Gaijin says he tried it, ran out of gas, and the game wanted me to hoof it. I stopped playing. Yeah. <laughs> Although, actually, I don't know. Walking is probably actually much more interesting and effective than driving because the driving in that game was so bad. But Deadly Premonition is a fantastic game. I, I, I never finished it myself, but what I did was to comfort myself. I'm not going to finish this, but I'll go and watch. Again, Giant Bomb did a complete playthrough. And if only for the hilarity of the co commentary as they do it. But yeah, it it is. I can understand why it's a classic because it is so weird. And so utterly broken and so out of date that it's absolutely a work of art. And I can only hope that the new one is going to be equally as weird and broken. So I can absolutely see why it was it was a much loved game. And I did kind of enjoy it. It's weird kookiness. It's just that the, the controls just didn't gel with me at all. And I think I got to the bit where you're in the in the lumber factory and you're trying to get away from the the axe wielding bloke and it's like ah I don't know. But yeah, just the, the this is hard to explain if you haven't played it. There's no way to to explain Deadly Premonition. Or was it called in Japan? It was called Red Seeds Diary or something, wasn't it? I think in Japan. There's no way to explain it in any way that would make any sense. At all. Like just the little scenes like where, you know, Francis York Morgan eats something in the sheriff's office that the, the female cop has produced, has made. Like some cake or sweet or sandwich or something. He's like, oh, this is the most amazing thing ever. I need to know the recipe. I must have the recipe right now. And this is in the middle of him talking about a murder. And it's like, where, what? The whole was weird. And everything takes forever. Conversations take forever. It's just brilliant. Inappropriate music coming in at just the wrong moments in such a way that it's just perfection. Sweary is a genius, an accidental, unintentional genius. <sighs> Doo -doo -doo. That's the normal reaction. It's amazing, says Gaijin. Yeah. What do you think, Zach? I've, oh, I've got that tune in my head now. The Beautiful Life. It's in my... <laughs> I've put it in my own head and it's going to be there for hours now. Oh, flipping heck. God damn it. No. Gosh darn it. <sighs> right. Uh, blowy of the nose or wipey of the nose. Sadly, I don't get a lot of time to do gaming now. Last few weeks I had a good session of Destiny and stuff, but at the minute, I haven't got time. So unfortunately, I've got tons of Destiny I want to play. I've got I got myself Borderlands 3 that I'm not very far into and I haven't got time to play. I, I fancied getting the Outer Worlds, but I haven't got time. There's no point buying it. So right now at the moment, I'm just not going to have time. So the Xbox is gathering dust a little bit. Uh, what time are we on? Quarter past to five o'clock. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm having curry thoughts now. And uh, I do hate to say this, but when curry thoughts enter my head, you guys just drop off the radar, let's just be honest. When it comes to curry happiness, everything else just ceases to matter completely. So you can see, hopefully, uh, that if it, was, if it was assembled like that on the finished model, would be lined up quite nicely. But of course, in reality, it's going to be like that because it's, expand it's expanded out because all the armour... Uh, don't forget... I am building this in a fixed pose, um, so all the armor is designed. Everything's built to be glued into place, so that all the armor is opened out. Because it's not a pose, it's not going to be our ticket. It's going to be fixed pose model, so um, it will be like that. But at least you'll have the idea that when it's closed, it's like that, and when it's open, it's like that. Now, if I was doing it closed, like I said, I'd have the option then of touching in the black the black decal there, or you know, just putting some damage there, like chips. Because these are two separate parts. Ideally, if you if you if you're ever going to do this, where you've got a decal that goes over two parts that are going to come apart, if you can wait till the decal is fully dry, and then cut it, 
the only reason I was trying to I was doing it there where it was still moving around a bit is because this was kept, this wasn't staying in place and it was a faff and I was panicking a bit. The tape was giving out. So if you are yourself doing this, where you want to put a decal across, say two parts. Let's say it's on a on a if you're making a gunpla and you want the shoulder part, say it's on a unicorn, and you want the shoulder part to expand and be able, and be movable, and you want a decal to go over it. Just do it when it's closed and then slice it with a sharp knife once it's dry and then you might have to go and put some setting solution to fold the loose edge in and that's how you do it don't do it like i did it where it's still wet or you have to well you can do with some decals these are very thick and it's probably a bad idea for me to try and do that but it's easily fixed a bit of black paint or like i say if i needed to a little bit of damage but it's going to be open so i'll just touch it in with some black paint uh let's have a look don't buy the Outer Worlds, get Game Pass instead. It's on that. It says pull at Team Inept. I don't play games enough. I don't get on the Xbox enough to justify um, Game Pass. Really. Because that's more expensive. I'm only playing for Xbox Live. So uh, Alex Tadouf has done a playthrough of Outer Worlds already. I love it. Hope there's more content later down the line. Uh, Outer Worlds is the thing where if you make your character's intelligence super low, you get access to dumb conversation responses. I love that. Uh, yeah, it's Obsidian, isn't it? And Obsidian were always like the good Fallout developer. Although I have to, we've had this conversation before, but I, I found Fallout New Vegas boring. I understand it was more, I, I get the idea it was a it was deeper, like storylines, but I just found the actual physical game was boring because the whole, I think it was more just the setting was boring. The factions was great, but like Fallout 3, I spent months just going around Fallout 3 looking in doors and rooms and there's always a story. New Vegas, it was like, I'll walk from here to here and I'll see two giant ants and a hill. I got bored. So, yeah. And it was also brown. It was brown. Too much brown. <sighs> right, so anyway, what I'm going to do, because as I say, I'm having curry thoughts now and everything else is not important. Uh, I will continue to add coats of microsol to that big fat decal and when i'm happy that it's bedded down as much as it's going to i'm quite pleased it's done that well so far but when i'm happy that it's bedded down as much as it's going to go what i'll do is i'll poke that hole through with a pin where the decal goes over that hole there on the camera i'll poke that through with a pin uh, and i will strip out the decal from inside with it with a knife blade and then what i'll do is around the edges here again i'll just touch that in with some black paint or it might be that i do I've got to do outlining anyway, so the outlining I do might cover that up anyway. Uh, and on here, uh, I don't need to worry about here because that will settle in enough that the piece that goes on top will cover that up. Uh, and I managed to make sure it doesn't cover up that hole there, so there's nothing to do on this. It's just that one thrust of vent there I need to poke out and trim once it's fully dried. Uh, and I think that's everything. Uh, right, so I think what we're going to do, I'm going to call it there. Uh, I won't be back later on because again it is of course Monday so it's eModels tonight so don't forget eModels YouTube channel which is eModels UK uh, me Chris gross models in chat uh, Colin and Ted as in you know you know Ted Slap it on. Uh, we'll be doing the eModels live show it's Chris's what's in store tonight so there you go it's not my what's in store that'll be 9pm on the eModels UK YouTube channel do come along and watch uh, what else what else I'll do more of these. I've not got a lot of decals left to do now, but I've got some. So I'll do more of these this week. Remember, week, weekdays are my proper build times and weekends is move Warhammer stuff. So I'll do some more of these uh, as we go along. But I will eventually need to film some of this uh, because this the actual build series itself is a Patreon exclusive. I'll put it in chat for you. It is a Patreon exclusive build series, the actual proper series of this. So uh, if you want to watch the proper videos, do pop along to my Patreon page. Have a look and see if you want to consider becoming a patron. That would be really, really lovely. Uh, as I said before, I do depend on my patrons for my income and I love them to bits. So big thank you to my patrons. Uh, and if you want to go along, have a look, do consider that. Of course, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can do. You can go to emodels.co.uk for your normal model making supplies, or you can go to Goblin Gaming uh, for your tabletop stuff. Uh, massive savings in both stores. And if you use the link down below for Goblin Gaming, uh, not only do you make massive savings, if you use that link that's in the video description, it tells them that I sent you. It's my affiliate link, and I make a little bit of income. It doesn't cost you anything, but I make a little bit of commission on that, so it helps me out massively if you want to help me that way and don't forget of course if you're not already subscribed hit the subscribe button thank you for watching obviously hit the subscribe button but don't forget to hit the notification bell for two reasons one it tells you when i start a live stream because i'll just sometimes start a live stream without posting up anywhere and also it helps my video in the listings it actually improves my rank in the listings if you if people hit the notification bell 
Um, so I didn't realize that, but apparently it's true. It helps me get listed higher in search results if you hit that notification bell. So if you want to help the channel out and yourself as well, hit that notification bell uh, on my channel and it will make sure that my listings, my view videos go a bit higher in the listings. And that helps me out because all my videos, obviously, another source of income. But that's going to do us. Uh, what I'll do, I say I will do another one of these probably tomorrow. Uh, we're not sure what time. We might do a couple of them during the whole day. We might do one in the evening and one in the afternoon because I like to try and catch people throughout the day if I can. But until then, I shall say thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everyone who stuck with us. Um, Alex, if you haven't already, mail me with Simon's details and I'll, I'll sort out his terrible, terrible gift. <laughs> You're a bad man. Uh, but until then, I will say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome like this. Go be awesome, although I don't need to tell you that because you're already awesome because you're here watching me do nonsense. Uh, but until next time, I shall say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'm about to do my whole ending again. Go make something awesome. Go, Adios amoebas. Oh, my buttons aren't working. Hang on, that's gone, that's gone wrong, isn't it? <laughs> hang on a minute. Oh, I've had, hang on. My buttons fell over. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me just fix this. Oh, a little monkey. Hang on, let me quit that and let me then start it again. There we go, and press one of them and we press that and we do this. And I say, adios amoebas. No, it's still not working. Oh, I'll just do it myself. <sighs> adios amoebas. Ha <laughs> ha